Better known as the People's Choice, and salute to all my light skinned brothers out there. Jess Hilarious. Jess for the worldwide last. Jess don't do no lying. And Charlemagne the Doc. Don't get it, Jess. Everybody come to the Breakfast Club. I call this the hot seat. You're alive. You're alive. Breakfast Club is like being on America's front porch. Don't feel like my wrist cousins are never talking to me. <laughs> Every time I go to the Breakfast Club, I know it's going to be like a good man. I'm getting up. Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 Yes, it's Friday. The weekend is here, man. Woke up another day to serve you beautiful listeners. How y'all feel out there? You know what I missed this morning? What you miss? Young Dolph, man. I woke up this morning for whatever yeah. reason and was listening to so much Young Dolph and all I kept thinking to myself, we never gonna get no no, no new Young Dolph music. Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy. No. Jesus Christ. Yeah, rest in peace, Young rest Dolph. Rest in peace, yeah. Young Dolph, man. Salute to PRE and his, his family, his wife, his kids. Ah. Yes, indeed. No. Yeah, absolutely. How was y'all evenings? It was good. It was good. I watched Judge Judy and then watched Paternity Court. That's some of the best content to watch. What is mm-hmm. Paternity Court? Paternity Court is ju- uh, Judge Lauren Lake. She's a, uh, a judge out of Detroit. Mm-hmm. And that's when people take their possible co-parents to court to prove that they are the father or are not the father. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. And it's so entertaining to me. Like, you remember Maury, like how everybody used to be hung Maury, up on Maury yeah. Povich. Now it's Judge Attorney. Lauren Lake. Okay. I love her. She's she black? setting them straight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And Judge Judy, who obviously ain't going nowhere no time soon. I love her. I love how she be shutting them down. She do not like. She never when it don't like small talk. That's mm-hmm. right. She do not like you to beat around the bush to get to what what she asked. She got that much time. She right. do not. She she loves. She loves. Yeah, eighty one years old. She ain't got time for that. Not time like that. Yeah, but years she is eighty one years. Yo, and, and Judge Judy yep, looks like she just got a BBL. Yeah, go <laughs> take old lady. <laughs> she always Judge been thinking she did not just get. She uh, been like that. Yeah, look if you look back at old pictures of her, she always been a little thicky down the bottom. Let Judge Judy come from behind that desk if y'all want to. <laughs> okay, Judge Judy, <laughs> y'all take him. Fifty posted her one day by a picture of her body. Like, really? I ain't know. Yeah, and she was thick. Oh wow! <laughs> Seriously, I got me about to go Google Judge Judy for good vibes this morning. Sky, an eighty-one year old woman. Eighty-one year old woman. This guy right here. <laughs> How was your night? What you do? Oh, it's first salute to the uh, students at Al- Alabama State University. Got a chance to talk to them about uh, getting into this uh, radio career. So salute to all the students that showed up yesterday. I appreciate you guys. And then uh, last night, me and the wife we go on date night. So last night was date night. I went to. Uh, uh, Carbones, which is a, a restaurant in New York City, they have a, another restaurant called Zizi. Mm. So I went there last night, which was food was amazing, man. You, you know when you just eat too much and they just keep bringing food and keep bringing food and amazing. keep bringing food. It, it was tough to get up this morning. Very yeah. tough to get up this morning. I did see Ryan Garcia in the uh, restaurant last night. Nice. I did see him last. You night. You said he didn't look focused. I mean, he was in the restaurant at eleven o'clock at night. I don't think I. I I don't think that's. I thought he was trying to make one. Eleven. That's why you tired. Damn. Yeah, eleven o'clock. I didn't leave till midnight. Mm. It was. It was a long night, but we had a great time. Mm. It's gonna be a long night for Ryan Garcia on Saturday. He don't get focused. I think Ryan gonna surprise people. I don't know if he's going to win the fight, but I think he's going to show up uh, yeah. and, and perform better than people think he's performing. I think he's just out here selling a fight right now. That's think what so? I personally... Yes, I believe he's just out here selling a fight. I believe Ryan Garcia knows exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it. Well, I hope so. It has to be sold because apparently it's not. It's not at the Barclays. It's yeah. not selling at the Barclays. <laughs> yeah, I, I still don't understand why two West Coast fighters would fight in Brooklyn. Mm. Ryan said that a month ago when he was here on Burbs Club, he said he wanted to fight to be in Vegas. He Makes hoped it don't get changed to Brooklyn. So whoever changed it to Brooklyn, Ryan was the one who said they should keep it in Vegas. So who really crazy? <laughs> if you put it like that. That's if you put I'm it like that. Saying. If you all put right. it like that. Well, little Duval will be joining us this morning. Ow. Yes, he will. He's on the uh, We Them Ones comedy tour, mm-hmm. uh, which will be in uh, Baltimore and Atlantic City this weekend. And he just launched a podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network called Conversations with Unk. That's right. Yeah, so he'll be here to talk to us about that. And Brittany, uh, Brittany Spencer will be joining us Brittany this morning. Spencer will be oh, joining us. Oh, my Baltimore well. country singer sister. That's right. Yeah, she's on Beyonce's yes. album on the song Blackbird. She has an album out herself called uh, My Stupid Life. Mm-hmm. So she's one of these black women that are helping to lead this uh, new black renaissance that's right. in country music. Love right. It. And we might have another guest that's, that's popping through a little bit later, too. Oscar De La Hoya. Possibly. Possibly. He might be pulling up on us today. Of okay. course, the fight, like Charlamagne said, is this Saturday. He's one, of the promoters. Yeah, he's one of the promoters for the fight. Uh, <clears throat> he has uh, Ryan Garcia signed. So That's right. We might be chopping it up with him in a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get to some front page news when we come back. Uh, is uh, Israel launched some missiles yesterday. We'll give you all the updates about that. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Good morning, everybody. 
everybody, it's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Long live Dolph, man. Absolutely. I literally woke up this morning in a Young Dolph mood. Like, damn, we not going to ever get no more Young Dolph music, man. Drop on the clues bombs for Young Dolph. Damn. Mm -hmm. Young Dolph said she liked to argue, so I sent that chick to law school. On another song, Young Dolph said he sold, I forgot how much weed it was, but he sold so much weed and he gave 20% to the pastor. Mm. That's what I like. I like that type of ratchetness and righteousness. <laughs> okay, I like that kind of balance. Let's you get, hear me? Let's get in some front page news. <laughs> now, in NBA, the playing tournament is tonight for the eight seeds. The Bulls take on the Heat at 7, and the Kings take on the Pelicans at 9.30. Now, last night, also, Israel launched a missile attack against Iran in response to the attack from Iran last weekend. They said the U.S. officials confirmed they knew about the attack, but they had nothing to do with it. U.S. officials are confirming Israel has carried out a strike on Iran. State-run news agencies there in Iran reported at least three explosions were heard just northwest, several hundred miles away from Tehran, the capital of Iran. The city where this is happening has multiple military bases there. And news agencies in Iran are saying the nuclear facilities are safe tonight. Israel had told the United States that it would retaliate to Iran's airstrikes over the weekend where it sent a barrage of missiles and drones. But officials say the U.S. did not endorse the response. The attack comes hours after the Iranian foreign minister told CNN if Israel takes any further military action, its response would be, quote, immediate and at a maximum level. State News is reporting that Iran's air defense systems have been activated in several provinces. We are going to continue to monitor this developing story. We're starting to get some uh, footage in as well. We'll bring you all the latest developments. Well, what does this all mean? Because I, I was reading reports where Iranian officials were saying that there were no plans to respond against Israel for the incident. Like they were they were downplaying it. And they, they, they even referred to the incident as an attack by infiltrators uh, rather than by Israel. Which is basically saying there's no need for retaliation. I don't, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, they retaliated, and now Iran is saying they're going to retaliate back. No, Iranian officials actually said, well, from what I read, they're saying the opposite. They're saying they're not going to respond. Oh, from what I heard this morning on on ten ten wins on the way, and they said that they were going to respond from for this attack. I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, that's I don't know what to believe in. Mm. I, I, I saw them downplaying the attack a lot. Mm -hmm. Like Iran, I'm looking at it right now. Iranian officials said there were no plans to respond against Israel for the incident. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Well, also, 12 jurors have been picked for the Donald Trump's hush money trial. Now, the alternate still had to be picked, and we have some audio about this as well. Day three of jury selection in Donald Trump's hush money trial has led to a full jury being picked. This comes after some regression with jury selection today in the courtroom. Fox's Michelle Ross is live outside the Manhattan Criminal Court with more details. Michelle. Good afternoon. Today, jury selection took steps forward, back, and then forward again. We started the day with seven seated jurors, but after two were dismissed for different reasons, that brought the number down to five. But in the final hour of court, an additional seven were seated, bringing the total Total to 12, a full seated jury plus one alternate. But five are still needed before we can move on to opening remarks. Now, juror five. Drop on the clues bombs for juror number five, damn it. Now, juror five. Talk was, about juror number five. She was the only potential juror who raised her hand when lawyers asked if they have ever heard of Trump's other criminal cases. She was described so as. She's the only one that told the truth. That's the one y'all can trust. By the way, it's, you tell me that jury number five is the only person that raised their hand and said they heard of Trump's other cases in America in 2024. They should have dismissed all the other jurors except for number five right then and there because she's the only one that told the truth. Now, juror five, she was described as a younger black woman from Harlem. She's an English teacher. When asked where she gets her information. Hold on, don't, don't get this. She break her down some more. You got to build this up. She's an English teacher Correct. in a private charter school, mm -hmm. right? Lives in Upper Manhattan with her brother. Correct. She enjoys theater and writing in her spare time. That's right. That's right. You say she doesn't, she doesn't really care for news. Nope. That's what she said. Nope. She don't really care for news. Now, when they asked her where she gets her information from, she said she normally gets her news from Google and TikTok. That's right. And she listens to Inspirational, Inspirational Podcast. Podcast. And sometimes listens to the Breakfast Club radio show. Drop on the clues bombs. You hear me. Okay? You hear me? All right? And she said that she has friends who have strong opinions about Trump. And she said, President Trump speaks his mind. And I'd rather that than someone who's in office who you don't know what they're thinking. Oh, my God. Y'all in trouble come November. You hear me, Democrats? Lord have mercy. What is y'all doing? We have to make sure our news is right. If, that, if, if they're going to the breakfast club for news, we got to make sure She our said news occasionally. Okay, that's okay, that's okay, what occasionally. you should do. Okay? Still, at all okay, times, okay. let's make sure this okay. case should be right. That's yeah, occasionally, right. Occasionally. occasionally. And she said she has, a, she has a master's degree in education. And her godfather worked as a homicide 
homicide sergeant with the New York Police homicide, Department. Homicide, man. What I say? Homicide. I don't, that's not it's, like a spray. It's in him. That's it's not, in him. It's <laughs> naturally. It's not like a spray that makes you gay. <laughs> what is that? One of the two family... And she said one of her two family members works in law enforcement. All I know is salute to Jordan number five. She is an honest person because she's the only person who raised her hand and said she's heard of uh, Trump's other criminal cases. And sometimes... Y'all know y'all lying Club if y'all say y'all ain't never heard of Trump's other criminal cases. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if you don't... If you haven't heard of Trump's other criminal cases, you should occasionally listen to The Breakfast Club too. <laughs> there you like go. Like Jordan number five. Drop a bomb for Jordan number five. That's right. Last front page. Page news. Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. If you need to vent, call us up right now. Again, 800 585 1051. Hit us up right now. And good morning to Juro 5 out there. Mm -hmm. it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Get it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800 585 1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's happening? It's your boy, John, man. What up, Envy, Charlemagne, and God, man? Beautiful chest. Good morning. What's John, up, John? what's happening? Man, I got to get it off my chest, man. Listen, man, check this out. I just got off at 6 o'clock, right? I'm trying to go to McDonald's and get me a nice, fresh, hot sausage and cheese McMuffin. Pause. These mother... Got the nerve to have an attitude because day late. Y'all supposed to be open at 6 o'clock. It's 6 10. Y'all ain't open up yet. Then we got to wait two, three minutes and we short staffed and all that. Yo, listen, man. It's not my problem, bro. Get my goddamn business, man. Damn. Well, that's not the attitude. Sorry, that, I, I understand, but that's not the attitude to have. Everybody's a, probably a little stressed out this morning, okay? Yeah, but they still have to be able to maintain a level that's of right. professionalism because the customer is never always is never wrong. Yeah, well, listen, I don't believe that, but not in this case. This, thing, this same thing happened yesterday. They was late opening up yesterday, bro. Mm. Where's this McDonald's at? I, I what order city? the same McMuffin every morning when I get off at six, man. It's, it's nothing, boy. What boy, city? Nothing more. Where you from, bro? I'm in Georgia, man. I hate to say it. I'm, in Georgia. I'm from New York. I'm from Brooklyn, so you can understand my pain, man. I'm in Georgia with this bull. No. We can't understand your pain, but I tell you one thing: manners will take you where money won't. So if you just, you know, if, you, if especially if you go there all the time and you're a nice person, they'll probably be happy to see you coming. Pause. And, and I know Jess, yes, this, this might trigger Jess because she no used diddy. to work there. Okay. No diddy. Yo, follow me on Instagram, man. Rich Fatherhood, yeah? Hi, brother. Instagram. Did you ever have this problem when you worked at McDonald's? Why do we tell people to get it off their chest if you always got something to say <laughs> when they're getting it off? Oh, Amir. Yo, what's up? Is this Envy? Yeah, what's up, brother? Where's Jess at? Right here, babe. What's up? How you doing, Jess? Hello, man. Where you at? I'm right here, King. How are you? I'm good, man. Good morning, man. Good morning. Peace, peace, peace. Get off my chest. I'm headed to, uh, I'm in Virginia. I'm driving to North Carolina. I'm going Top Sail Beach. Okay. Hey. Oh, congratulations. Is it warm down there? Man, thank you. Say what? Is it warm? Yeah, man. It feels good out here. But I, I, I was calling to get off my chest by my coworkers, man. Okay. You know, I, I'm finally getting a break from them, and I've been—I ain't had a vacation in the whole year since I started here. And you know, they cool people and everything, but you don't realize how much your the coworkers or your friends or the people that you around every day can really just take a tax on your mind, man. Mm -hmm. And even if they're your good friends or you know y'all get along most of the time, you gonna have those disagreements, and everybody just kind of needs time away to really get their minds straight, man. So I'm just, I'm really blessed and grateful to have this time away with my family. I got a little four-year-old with me. You know, we driving safe. We got the rental. I got my lady in the seat. She became my fiance this year. Hey. I'm hey. happy, man. Congratulations. Man, you sound, congratulations. You sound like you work here at the Breakfast Club. <laughs> who, yeah, who, right. Who, who answered the phone and told you to say that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you sound like people that work up here. <laughs> hey, man. It is what it is. But, hey, y'all have a good day. I appreciate you. You right, too, man. Have fun. I, I can hear the positive energy in his voice. Yes. Can't you hear it? Yes. Yeah. About the raw his wife all weekend. He can play with the kids. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Being in the water at the beach. That's living. Yeah, you right. hear me? You right. Yeah. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, yo, it's Daquan, bro. I'm going to get it off my chest. K-Dot, drop the record. Huh? Hmm? Tell K-Dot to drop the record. Oh, yeah. It's K-Dot on the clock. Kendrick on the clock, man. I'm I'm, I'm actually to the point where... What a record at, bro? I don't and know, I play like bro. that every day. Nah, K-Dot is on the clock. And, and now they talking... Hey, what's up, Uncle Shala? Peace, King. At what, at what point do we give it to Drake? At, at what point? Honestly, man, I think Kendrick got the weekend. 
to Monday morning. Now, now somebody, my man Glasses Malone brought up a good point. He said it took Drake 23 days to reply to like that. Did it? Was it that long? Yeah, it was 20. I counted it out yesterday. It was 23 days. But the only difference I would say is that Drake and Kendrick have been throwing subliminals at each other for years. Mm -hmm. And then Kendrick did a drone strike a few weeks ago with like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he expected people to reply. Because Cole replied, even though he apologized. Mm -hmm. Then Drake gave him a whole song with push-up. So I don't know if Kendrick was prepared for that. Mm. I think Kendrick might have thought I'm just going to throw these bars out and ain't nobody going to say on. nothing. Right. But now people feeling sporty. So he's like, oh, okay, let me take a step back and, and, get, and get right. But he on the clock. Definitely on the clock. Definitely on the clock. Hello, who's this? DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the God. Good morning. Good OG morning. Rob. How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling this morning? Bless Black feeling? and highly favored. Good. I'm doing good. And hey, listen, man, God is great, man. I'm feeling blessed this morning. I just want to shout out my youngest son out of my clan of four, Cameron. He'll be a high school graduate this year, graduate this year. Okay. And um, I just want to tell him to, 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 to keep on going, stay positive, and keep them players going up, you know? And I love it. Amazing. All right, that's what it is. Blessings to your king, man. Congrats, well, brother. I uh, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. But y'all know what it is, man. It's Friday, baby. It's ball time, man. Let's, let's, go, go. let's go. I said, listen, I told him rise early, blessings for life, an opportunity. You shame how this game has changed a cartoon to me. Verse after verse, how I catch it. Put it on the line, exclamation point, how I finish him. Put a dot line, slow motion. Better than no motion. You kidding me? So I coast on him. Riding my way, forming identity. This hip hop legend creation is what I manifest. Just speaking to existence, the check side for business set. Best I, home of BI, shout out to D-Seps. Couldn't walk through at that junction without the respect. Seeing visions how I can eat. Hustle, compete. That land of grooves, ball for cheap. Rentals is sweet. Pop up on them in something for them. Fresh off touring in a Zoom meeting. Locking and deal for most courses. I've been him. Stay low, baby. Grinding, because when it hit, they going to be surprised on the legacy that it's coming with. OG. Okay, OG. Hey. You got some balls, Charlo? Nah, go ahead. Let's right. do it, baby. I got some balls. You ready? Uh, uh, Let's uh. go. MC in my show. I say gizmos cutting up for D. Suckers dash down with me. To be down, uh. you must appeal. Gay. To what? That's how <laughs> I feel. We're gifted and we're going for just hilarious. Is rated R. Uh. You got kids. Yo. Oh. Hey. Yes. Uh. Yes. The rhythm. The rebel. Thank God. Never the devil. Stop. Stirring the pot. Don't forget, envy on my pause. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. All right, guys. That ain't it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, OG. Yo, thank you. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good weekend. Blessings to y'all and the family. Peace, All right. OG Rob. All right, peace, y'all. <laughs> All right. He said, I got a pill. He said, gay. <laughs> <laughs> Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. We got Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? Yes, 50 Cent made a big move. I'm going to tell y'all about it later. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. Twin. The Breakfast Club, home of sad love songs in the morning. Where have you been? The songs you play when you're driving in your car and the windshield wipers are going and it's not even raining. Nobody knows. The only show that can make you cry over your ex and then give you reasons to kill him. All in a matter of seconds. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? We all the breakfast club. Get What's your wrong with the music? Up. Good morning. <laughs> you wrong get, me. Let's get the chance with the mess. <laughs> news is real, brother. This is Lawrence, Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On the breakfast club. She's a culture shift. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. Oh, she got her glasses on. We about to get a good read now. Yeah, I guess. I'm about to try to give it to y'all. All right, look. So, all right, this is good news. 50 Cent uh, launches G-Unit Studios in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Sheree put to be um, exec. Uh, drop a clues, motherfucker, because that's good. Come on. Oh, that's, 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 that's yes, amazing. Because he following in Tyler Perry's footsteps to me. That's like, right. this is great. Mm -hmm. And he plans to revitalize the, the downtown area. Yep. He's uh, purchased and purchasing more and more and more properties down there. So, mm -hmm. um basically just you know renovating a whole whole little city um g unit will be built that's that's where the studios will be built down there mm -hmm. and um 
this is also going to open up a lot of jobs for Hell people too, yeah. like a lot, a lot of, of jobs. opportunities yep. for our people mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I think that this is great. A press conference for it will be um, held on April 18th. What, that was that, yesterday. That was yesterday. Oh, yesterday. oh yeah, yeah, yeah my did the conference yesterday. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So yeah, he did the conference yesterday. We have audio, but it's just saying the same thing that I just said. So yeah. I don't care to play it, play it. But congratulations, Fifty. I love that. Yeah, I think well, they're gonna start shooting by the uh, end of the year. They're, they're banking on. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's buying apartment complexes. He's, bu- he's buying houses. He's buying yeah. uh, restaurants. He's buying clubs. He's buying so when the actors directors and people come down there they have some place to go that's safe that they can Mm -hmm. enjoy so he's really invested into that city and he has another announcement that he's doing like a a huge weekend to bring more money to the city so 50's doing a lot down there he's he's having all all his friends and people down there to heavily look in there and see what they can do so Mm -hmm. Shreesport is dope that is 50 Cent that is 50 Cent who used to be bullying rappers on mixtapes <laughs> now he's doing it t- he, now he's doing TV and film at such a high level that he's got his own studio, own studio. in Shreveport I don't mm-hmm. think what 50 is doing uh, in the TV and film world is being appreciated enough but uh, salute Fifth. Mm-hmm. absolutely thank you um, drop a clues one for my assistant with more information <laughs> yeah, I was thank there you. that's why I said I was there thank you Yeah. oh you fine. was there yesterday yeah. no I didn't go yesterday but I was there um, I've been there twice already Shreveport oh, okay. he's my inside source so that's good thank mm-hmm. you so much alright moving on other news Sean um did an interview. Uh, now listen, this this what I I didn't really know. Y'all had to tell me that I didn't know that Shine. I actually seen Shine's mm-hmm. interview, right? And I didn't know that that was the Shine that was rapping like Biggie. Yeah, like but I did not know that because this man is from Belize. Yes, he was born he in Belize. He don't talk like he sound in the songs. Who on the F with us? Bobby the Bobby the Bobby. Yeah, I did not know that. Mm-hmm. He looked like a little pastor. <laughs> I was like, dang, this is the same shot from. But no, he's, anyway, a, he's a politician, man. He's a politician, politician in Belize. I know. I did not know that. And everybody, listen. All right, all right. I, I'm going to keep my promise to myself to the end of the story. But for everybody who didn't know, whatever, there was a 99, um, I mean, a shooting back in 99 in, in New York that was like in connection with Diddy, Sean, and three victims. Mm-hmm. Diddy and Sean were both arrested for it. Um, Diddy got acquitted and um, Sean did 10 years. When he got out of jail, he was deported back to Belize mm-hmm. and um, where he became the head of the Belize United Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Life got all types of twists and turns and stuff. But that allowed him to come back to the States. So now he could come back to the States as an official I guess member of whatever it is the board or whatever it may be yes thank you so much assistant <laughs> um, <laughs> but but they're in, in Belize they're like they did this this interview with him there because they have a problem with that they're like they're like you you got deported and they just trying to like like you know come for him or whatever right mm-hmm. and this is his audio in the interview when he, they was asking him about his past over here it opens wounds when you hear you know the victim saying that it was Diddy that shot her. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that, but I am relieved that people are saying what the truth is, that, you know, I did not uh, shoot um, those people. Fragments were never removed, uh, so there was never any forensic testing to say who it was. Uh, But the victims are vindicating me. Uh, Witnesses are vindicating me. But I have I have moved on. I, I'm not trying to relive that. Yeah, I saw a lot of people saying, you know, why is Shine just speaking on that now? But he's always said that. Yeah, he's always said he was innocent. Like, yep. He's Since always so been consistent with that. So when the reporter mm-hmm. asked him, does he think his association with Diddy taints his image? Shine just repeated the same thing he's been mm-hmm. saying yeah. since 1999. But when you do take the fall for something, that's just always going to be a stain. Like that stage, yeah. you, you took the fall for it. But, um, but can people grow and people evolve? Clearly, oh, yeah. he's a clear case of growth and evolution. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's just what I'm saying. It's just always going to be that stain. People can grow and evolve from it. But mm-hmm. the fact that he did take the fall for something like that. I but mean, did he take the fall? Because he didn't plead guilty. He, you know, he mm-hmm. was charged, but he didn't plead guilty and say this was I, I'm doing this. But you know, mm-hmm. they they charged him with it. You know, yeah. so it didn't really take the focus. He's been saying he's been innocent for even when he was, even when he got out. He said, "I, I didn't mm, shoot that, mm. shoot but that gun the, that night." The, the victim, Natanya Rubin, who's been speaking up for years, also uh, one of the victims. She was, uh, she's always said that Diddy was the one to shoot her. So I mean, both of their stories kind of do support each other. But yeah, that this has recently just come about this interview, which was on Channel Five Belize. So. Mm-hmm. No. Um, that's just what I had to and, and, and people acting like he didn't get asked that. He got asked that. So yeah, like he just the, bought it up. And and, <laughs> you know and since oh nine and believe they've been right? asking. No, no, no. When, since he got deported, since he oh, got deported. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, they've been um, asking him about this and Belize. So, yeah, 
You just ripped your finger up, but yeah. I, I had another story, but whatever. That's just no. for the mess. Just with the mess. And her news is real. That's right. Mm-hmm. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. Uh, Donald Trump was back in court, but who cares? We got to tell you about Jura 5. And we'll explain it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Uh, morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, NBA quickly to play in tournament games tonight. The Bulls take on the Heat at 7 o'clock, and the Pelicans take on the Heat at 9.30. Now, let me just warn you about some things that's going on. If you have kids in school, the Blackout Challenge is back. What the hell is the Blackout Challenge? It's a TikTok challenge that uh, has landed a couple middle school students in the hospital. It's a challenge where you're supposed to hold your breath until you pass out. Oh, God. Now, uh, two students in South Orange, New Jersey, actually had to go to the hospital because of it. So tell your kids, don't do no stupid challenges, please. Why do they want to do that? What is the point? Like, I'm just trying to see what, what is the point. Like, what are they trying to prove here? I, I, I don't know. All right. Now, also, there is the can you hear me scam. Now, this is the uh, latest scam where somebody calls you and says, can you hear me? You say yes. And they record your voice of you saying yes. Then they use your voice to try to open up bank accounts or try to get money from your bank and even order things online. So when the person asks you something, it just replies yes. Yes, because they have your voices saying yes. So people are saying, please be careful of the can you hear me now scam. Well, who they calling that says yes? Because whenever I'm on the phone and my phone is breaking up, I'm not saying when somebody was like, can you hear me? I've never said yes. You'd be like, mm. yo, can you hear me? Yeah. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Mm. Yeah, I can hear you. Then you wait a little bit. And mm. Can you, you hear me? And then you yeah. say, yo. Yeah. yeah. And then they'd be like, yo, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. I have never said yes. Can oh, you hear me? Oh, and I just can't hear people. I just hang up. Like, I don't ever. Oh, I love like, that. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I don't go to it. I did that to you yesterday. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and lastly, 12 jurors have been picked for the Donald's Trump, uh, Donald Trump's hush money trial. Uh, they still have to pick a couple alternatives. But who I want to discuss is Jura 5. Come on, now mm-hmm. talk about that good sister, Jura number 5, man. Now, Jura 5. She got a number, too. I saw the number. I can't remember. This be something. Oh, well, she's described as a younger black woman. That's from, right. From, from Harlem. Harlem. That's mm-hmm. right. She works as a school teacher now, an English teacher, woman after my own heart. Right. Because my mom was an English teacher. Mm-hmm. That's right. Now, they asked her where she gets her information from. Hold on, you, you're speeding. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. She says she's a creative at heart. That's right. She does photography with her mm. friends in her spare time. Correct. She likes to go to the theater. The theater. Okay, very well-rounded woman, this mm-hmm. sister is. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. A- a- immaculate taste, I'm hearing. That's right. Immaculate taste. Now, they asked her where she gets her news information from. Mm. She said normally... She gets her news from Google and TikTok. Okay, okay. She listens to inspirational podcasts. That's right. And what else? And sometimes she listens to the Breakfast Club radio show. Now, I want the record to show. I only saw one outlet said occasionally. Every other outlet I said, I saw, she said she listens to oh. the Breakfast Club, uh, a popular morning program based out of a New York City Hip hop radio station. Now, should we be nervous that she gets the news no, from us? No, I mean she's very well informed. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Very mm-hmm. well informed human that person is. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. I respect it. Drop one of clues bombs for Jordan number five. Shout out to Jordan number Thank five. you for listening because we love all our listeners. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, when she when they asked uh, if they ever heard of Trump's other criminal cases, she said yes, of course. Very honest woman. Very honest. By the way, the only honest woman on that Jura. On that jury, clearly. Because mm-hmm. you're not going to sit in and tell me that the 11 other people on that jury never heard of any of Trump's other criminal cases. If, they, if they've never heard of, of any of, other, of Trump's other criminal cases, the media is really, really, really doing a piss poor job at, not, at, at, at doing their job. That's right. You've never heard of any of Trump's criminal cases? Trump talks about his criminal cases and the witch hunts that they are. That's the right. media talks about his criminal cases and that one woman that one honest woman raised her hand and told the truth right. I would have dismissed everybody else except for her that's right just kept up because everybody else is a liar mm. you're a liar and you know you're a liar well the trial resumes this morning at 9.30 a.m. so I'm sure Jura 5 is on her way to the courthouse so good morning to you Jura right. 5 and also by the way the fact that uh, none of the other jurors all the other jurors said I never heard of Trump's other cases Trump getting off <laughs> mm. <laughs> the fact that they are already willing to lie like that and this, cur- this case hasn't even started yet Trump getting off mm-hmm. telling you that right now alright well that is front page news now when we come back little Duval will be joining us so we're gonna kick it with Duval when we come back so don't move it's the Breakfast Club good morning the Breakfast Club 
everybody, it's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yeah, I'm here. Lil Duval. Cuba. Making his uh, every five year appearance. Yeah, man, I'm finally here. You've been trying to get me here for a while, but I've been pushing it off. I think it's been five years, right? It's been that long. It's been that long. Mm. Well, I'm here now, man. They finally got me. I ain't had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> How you feeling? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. I can't even complain, man. I'm just here just promoting this uh, podcast we got. That Conversations I've, with Unc. Conversations with Unc that yeah. I've been doing, that I've been supposed to do it, but they finally got me to do it, so I'm here. What the hell finally made you sit down and say, I'm going to do a podcast? Mm -hmm. I hate talking to him like I don't talk to yeah, him every day. Yeah, I hate day. doing I it, too. We going to fake it. This going to be the boringest goddamn <laughs> man. Because I'm not going to say shit. He not going to ask me shit that I don't want to talk about, so it's just, what are we doing? But what is Conversations with Unc, though? Like, what? what like, this what's is some that they they made me do honestly, <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> honestly, because like honestly, since day one, Charlamagne been telling me getting the podcast since he been. How long y'all been doing Brilliant Idiot? Eleven years, man. Huh? Eleven years, and I never did it. And then, well, you my, started and stopped. You had the one with your sister. Yeah, I stopped. I, oh, sure. I, okay. Because I did that just for my sister. Then I stopped, and then I got hit by that car, and I was sitting there and had nothing to do. And then Clay talked me into doing this, right. so mm. I'm doing it. <laughs> How you doing since that? Oh, I'm good. I can't even complain. I'm blessed, man. I I, I healed back perfectly. I can do everything now, so I'm blessed, man. Yeah. That ain't the question you asked earlier. What is it? What she asked? What I say? And I said, you ask him, but I don't know. What? I said, so you fell off the roof or you fell off the on roof. the roof? What she talking about? Something about the roof. <laughs> no, I got hit by a car. I mean, Yo. I got hit by a car on my four-wheeler. And I was on it. Yeah, okay, so I was on a tour with you. <laughs> you had a whole, it was like a cartoon that was set up. It was oh, dope. yeah, that's how far I got but hit. I, like, I, I really got hit and flew. Like, yeah, I and really you flew. saw the roof and all that. Yeah. I remember seeing the roof. You seen everything. It was like you was like a plane. Yeah, yeah, and I really flew. Like, yeah, that's what okay. you, you see me saw the roof. Mm -hmm. I was able to see the roof. That's how high I was in there. Okay. Like, I flew. Like, I, I really almost died. And we so. was and we was laughing at the shit because he actually used it. In, this in, shit wasn't shit to What happened? I called him first. <laughs> was you the first one I called him? He FaceTimed me from the scene. I FaceTimed him. I was laying I on the ground bleeding to death. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I was bleeding to death. And you I, called, I thought he was in a movie, man. And you FaceTimed Charlamagne Yes. Guys. I called him to tell him to call Ludacris. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> For what? I don't know. <laughs> He was like, he was like, man, I think this is me. I'm never gonna dance again. I'm never gonna perform again. Yeah, I, like, th man. I said it was over, man. I kept saying it was oh. over. Well, first I, I told him call Trey the truth, because you know Trey is always yeah, there yeah, to let help and That's what I hung up with him. <laughs> and I had to call Clay and Clay 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 spoke spoke life into me. Okay. This <laughs> hell, I was thinking you might as well no, die. I, I called Clay <laughs> to see what was going on. Cause I, I swear I thought he was playing until the end mm. when I saw the doctors turning him around. And then he started oh. like screaming in a way. I'm like, oh, yeah, everybody thought. I was exactly playing exactly until that. I went live. For mm. real, for real. When I went live and, and I showed them drilling my knee live, yeah. like doing yep. surgery, yep. they was like, oh, this ain't playing. Yeah. So, man. But I you made it through, man. You're going to have to tell this story a million times for the rest of your life just because it is such a testimony. I do tell it on stage. That's yeah, why I yeah. leave it on stage. That's why I ain't telling too much now because I want to leave it for stage. Yeah, 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 I yeah, try yeah. to give separation for both, to give a little bit here and a little bit on stage. So that's yeah. what I do now. That's why I ain't telling too much of it. But I do talk about it on stage. It actually kind of pushed my stand-up more because it, it left the elephant in the room I ain't had no choice but to be right. on I was in a wheelchair was you there when I, I was there cause yeah. DC had rolled you up in a wheelchair and everything yeah yeah so a lot of people showed me love like mm -hmm. matter of fact who gave me the most love was them handicapped people like my yeah. first show it was like 30 <laughs> handicapped motherfuckers Mm. Up front in wheelchairs, <laughs> and they they spoke life into me and everything. Man. Talk like, about welcome. Yeah, no, nah, I'm talking about they like when I was messed up, like they was DMing me, telling me I because I always showed love to them yeah. on social media and yeah. like up oh, and like in Jacksonville and stuff. So when my time came, they came and showed me love. Like I support up. anybody that's in the, in the wheelchair because it take a lot just to get up and just to get in that chair just every day. I don't see how they do it because I couldn't do it for six months. I was going crazy. That's good. You be shouting out the Crips now, but you ain't talking about. Well, the I shout out the Crips. Not the gang. You be talking about the people in the wheelchair. Oh yeah, <laughs> shout out wheelchair gang. As you should. <laughs> do you feel good though? Nah, I feel good, man. Like I, like I said, Clay he instilled life into me. Told mm -hmm. me I was gonna make it. And then the last day I got off my crutch, and he went over. So he made it all the way. To get me back on my feet and then went on over. That's crazy. Mm. That's life, man. No, that yeah. is life. Cause I, the, the the last picture Clay posted was me, you, him, and Jay Ski. That's crazy. That man. trap city. It was almost Cafe. like a movie. Like he was really here just enough for me to get going, get back yeah. on my feet. It was dope, though. I mean, it was it's a beautiful thing, but mm -hmm. it's it just I had to go through it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I don't regret nothing I went through. How do you find comedy in that though? 
It's life. Everything in life is comedy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the most powerful comedy is the stuff that you went through the most. The, the hardest things you went through the most. So that's comedy. I don't see I don't see having good comedy without hard. Yeah. I know? really feel like you are one of the, the few people who make anything funny, or or if, even if it ain't funny mm -hmm. to other people. You. That's why I'm telling you, I didn't I didn't believe you either. I mean, that's why I ain't taking serious. And the audience what? was laughing like, like we didn't know. And the funny thing about it, like it. I told him, when we, I was like, when have I ever made a, like I don't do those, Um, you know how people be out and, and making fun of people. Yeah. I don't never do no comedy like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So for when people thought it was a yeah. jo joke, I was like, how y'all thought it was a joke? I ain't never did no spoof <laughs> like this. I guess because we don't really take nothing serious. Which yeah, is what, which is we don't. We do not. But that, I don't, and I get it. That's why I didn't take it per I don't take none of that stuff personal yeah. but it just like I was like damn why did, how could they even think that I was joking mm -hmm. and I'm mad maybe because I was doing it myself I was really bleeding to death yeah. right there I'm like they don't know I'm really dying yeah <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know the funny part is people think Duval be joking but a lot of the ways he moves is how we should live in life like a lot of us take on other people's problems mm -hmm. like yeah. I sent him something the other day and I was like man look what this person going through he didn't <laughs> respond back and then so yesterday we start talking about something I said yeah but you ain't say nothing about such and such and he was like cause I didn't give a f and I was like he right I want to say something about it, but I, I end up saying their name so I ain't gonna say it no but. don't say <laughs> please no <laughs> nah. Please don't. Nah. You've been in comedy for 25 years, right? Yeah, this is my 25th Dang. year, man. Mm. This, and that's that's really not a lot in comedy. It's just, you got to think somebody like Cedric and Bruce and them, they've been doing it for like, damn near 40, 50. How long? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think even Mike Epps, Charlotte Mike Epps, he's been doing it at least about like 40. Nah, right, 40? Not if I've been doing years. it 20, wait, I was a kid watching them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Michael Blackson been doing it long as I, longer than me. We didn't realize me. how old they was when we was young, though. Nah, yeah. Or how good. young they was when we was young. I've been doing it 25 years, 99. Cause Mike ain't nothing but like 50 something. Yeah, 50. I, I don't know how old Mike is. Yeah, Mike like 50 something, but he's been doing it a long time. 53. So for, for 25 years, sound like a long time, but it's really not in comedy. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? It's really not. Mm -hmm. But it's part of life. I love it. Do you care about the type of jokes you make at this point? Nope, I makes whatever I feel like what goes. I don't. Well, my standards more so entertaining. Like I, I they call I call myself Sammy David Duval. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I do more than just stand up. I do stand up comedy, entertaining, laugh, dance. Yeah. We gonna do everything on my. Yeah, shit. and that's why I feel like the evolution of of our people are like we don't want to just sit there and just watch stand up we think we do but we really don't mm. like we you'll sit there and watch six comedians and they everybody doing 25 minutes a piece back that's like back. three hours you're gonna be mm. sleep if they ain't doing some type of entertaining thing yeah. so that's why i understood so i implement that in my show and keep them going so it's your fault all these comedians started making songs <laughs> <laughs> he's saying that because he, he texts me that every week see that's your fault <laughs> see that's your fault every time somebody do something that's you that's you I mean I am I guess but mm -hmm. it's part of it we gonna see more and more of it it's just I'm the only one that actually perfected it and then took it to another level that made a hit song but I see people like DC Young Fly all they need is one song mm -hmm. and it's gonna take oh. them to that next level you know what I'm saying <laughs> alright we got more with Little Duval when we come back it's The Breakfast Club good morning morning everybody it's DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with little Duval. Charlemagne? You've been enjoying the Drake Rick Ross feud, though. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. It was better than when J. Cole's, because I was really rooting for J. Cole's, man, but then. Why? Why not? Like, I knew, I because never, I knew they wasn't going to die. I knew it wasn't going to be no beef. But I didn't think yeah. Cole and Kendrick even had an issue to want to even go at each they other. They did. Like that. You could tell, like, if you look back at the old stuff, like, they had, like, a little competition. So that was good enough. Like they it was, it was lyrical warfare, and then this tapped out after you gave up. It was cool. Like even it, when I, was, I don't know how, how recent that interview was with Kendrick with with Big Boy, but he was like, yeah, man, it was competition. It was like, it was like, I mean, I, I, I don't have no beef with him. I just don't think he better than me. But well, rap beef All is right. different though. Like you can't really have a friendly rap. Yes, you can. Yeah. Not nowadays. Yes, you. Cause they you just memes. proved it. So you really thought Kendrick and J Cole were gonna come heads up? No, but. J. Cole was boring. J. Cole no, he was wasn't so that, whack. I was, I was enjoying and it. And he was lying. He ain't believe none of that stuff. Half the shit be lying. So you, I, I enjoyed the half, half. So you thought all of what what's name was saying was real? What Who? Tupac was saying was real? Yes. No, you did. Well, I did too. Yeah, yeah I, did too. I did too. I did too. I did too. I did too. But I was a kid. It was we were supposed to believe it. Just like wrestling, you're supposed to believe that real until you get older. Yeah. Now I can enjoy it. I can enjoy it like these n not gonna die. But that's why Ross mm. is so entertaining because Ross comes from a certain era. Yeah, Ross and was Drake actually got a lot good. of that in him. I, I mean, I think Ross gave a real like 
Beef responds. And it was quick. That's why you got to give his props. Like, we still ain't heard Kendrick yet. I'm, and that's what I'm rooting mm -hmm. for. Kendrick because he's my clock. boy. Like, I with Kendrick. He's dark skin. He a Gemini. You got to say yeah, he ain't the same height. Yes, That's why I do. I'm trying to think. When I met him, was he? Nah, he ain't. Nah, I, yes, I know who everybody is. I'm taller than. I know everybody Y'all probably know everybody. Right? He's taller yeah, than. Yeah, it's everybody. not that many people. Nah, I'm taller than everybody that's short. Everybody that's short, I'm taller than. I'm like the who? tallest. I'm taller than Kev. I'm taller than who else short? You taller than Kevin? Yeah, I'm tall. Who else short out here? That's on YouTube. You can look on YouTube mm, and see. We, we went back and forth with that one. Mm -hmm. That was about 10, wow. 15 years ago. 15. Long back. <laughs> yeah. About 15, 15. Everything you done seen viral now, we done done it 15 years ago. It just got resurfaced. <laughs> Fake rap battles. Yeah, we done done. Me and him done done a bunch of skits. We were probably don't, the first one. Please don't have to go looking for nothing. No, nah, don't do none of that. <laughs> oh, don't bring up none of our past. Matter of fact, you deleted it, ain't no? You deleted it. <laughs> I think about one all the time. Now I'm just waiting. Nah, delete that. <laughs> Who got it? Is it on my... I don't know where it's at. <laughs> Tell me about it once it's over with. Sure. I'll delete it. Did y'all hit Baltimore yet for the We The Ones? We do that this weekend. Y'all doing Baltimore? Nah, we do Baltimore. I can't wait. Like Baltimore, Baltimore are, always man. showed me love, too. Yeah. I even, I just looked at a picture. Like Sometimes I be doing shit. And I don't be knowing why I do it. Mm. But I was in some hood. And you wouldn't even... Like, when I'm around, like, the... The, the street is niggas, they don't be on that street around me. Yeah, because they yeah. want to laugh. They yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah, not even just laugh. It's just like we just, they not even. It's a vibe. Like you relate, they relate to you. Yeah, it's not. And I'm not like trying to be like on no street. Yeah. It's just like they just, it just brings out the, I think they turn back to the, the being my nephew or some yeah. Like they don't look at me like that. So I bring that good energy to them. And that's what, the last what I got when I went in Baltimore. I got to do that dance too when I come on stage. That What's that oh, shit y'all be doing? The two-step Yeah, Park I got to yeah. do that shit. Park Struck. It came from a hood in okay, Park okay. Yeah, yeah, so I got to do that. Now I got to do all that y'all that y'all call something else. We call it the what? city boy, but y'all uh -huh. call it something else. Y'all do like that. Oh, my God. My little sister be doing yeah, that. ain't nothing but the city boy called. that y'all done renamed. But. We ain't, I don't know. I got it from Baltimore, too. Yeah, I know so Baltimore. I know. We, we talked about it on social media. <laughs> we, we went back and forth about it, but we we go there this weekend with the We The Ones tour. That's that's a okay. hard-ass tour, man. Yeah. We all doing that thing. It's you, Mike Epps, Chico, Carlos, DC, D-Ray. Yeah, and we Whoa, selling yeah. out too. Like, yeah, yeah, we all, uh, and we all showing love. Like everybody ain't no egos. Everybody doing their thing. We all encouraging each other. I like that. If anything, I'm the one doing the, doing the most. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I have to shorten my time up because I really be doing too much. But yeah, and it, it is disrespectful as a comedian. Like you don't want to go over your time, especially when you got so many comedians on there. It ain't about being the funniest. It's just when you're going over your time. Three minutes don't sound like a lot, but mm -hmm. it really is a lot. Mm -hmm. If you got five other comedians, and that last person going up, he got to wait because I have to go up last sometimes too, and I hate going last yeah. too. So you want to be respectful for that. But in all in all, we all doing. If I I go over too much, then Mike might might shorten his time or Chico or somebody mm -hmm. like that. So we all doing our thing. Somebody died at the show, right? I ain't talking about that. Damn, go ahead on. He want to go straight to that. <laughs> Where? I knew I already doing that. What you oh mean? my god! Nah. Yeah, we doing our thing, man. We <laughs> <don't wanna talk. laughs> Is it a comedian that you uh, that you hate going after them? Mm -mm. No, yeah, I can go after. People don't like going after me. Mm. But anybody that go after me, they doing their thing. That's why I show love to, to DC, like all the new comedians. Well, I don't even, they not even new no more, but all the, the ones that came up after me. The younger ones. Yeah. yeah, the younger ones, if they can go up after me, they the truth. And all them go up after me and they all do their thing. Yeah. You wanted to, you know, people be wondering how you stay so relevant on social media, but you were the social media guy early, 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 early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all was. You was too. You know what I'm saying? We all was. It's just, we grandfathered in now, so ain't no stopping me on social media. Like, yeah. You can try. Mm -hmm. They done deleted me so many goddamn times. It is what it is at this point. <laughs> how has social media helped you as a, as a artist? Just like anything else, it's just another form of way of doing entertainment. It's just another outlet. Mm -hmm. So I just took that outlet and capitalized off of it. Mm -hmm. Just like whatever next. If I give a f I'm going to jump on that too. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting older now. You know what we done talked about. <laughs> Is there anything you want to do that you haven't? I feel like I'm doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've um, already planted the seeds of what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just watching them flourish and mm -hmm. doing everything. And I don't like to talk about what I'm doing. I just like to do it now. Yeah. Because when you talk about it, it kind of takes the impact from it. Duval, one of them people that truly appreciates everything he has. That's mm -hmm. why he gets blessed with more. That's the problem with the area we live in. Nobody appreciates where they at in the current And everybody moment. just do what they see work. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's that's less, that's what made it so hard for me to get into podcast now is because I feel like podcast is is just another. I mean, it's good, but it's it's like what you do. It's media. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when we started, we all that was our thing. I don't want to do what he do, and he don't want to do what I yeah. do. 
It's just now that entertainment has evolved over to more media now. Not everybody doing it. So I feel like that's what we got to do. Well, I don't give a f about media like yeah. that. And that's what we are entertainers. We not media. You know what I'm saying? But well, Jeff is now. Well, yeah, you are now. You are, yeah. now. and you good at it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You good at. It. But I could do this, but I really just like entertaining. I like just being in the public. I, I'm a social person. That's what social media. He media. I'm social. Mm -hmm. I'm social. That's why we work good together. And I'm still social. He's still media. Just media is popping now. Yeah. And that's why everybody else going to it. That's why I ain't working for them, but it works for people <laughs> like this because this is really what he is. You right. know. I'm 25 years in. Yeah, and they trying to skip the line, but they ain't going to do it. They keep trying. They'll mm -hmm. see. All right, we got more with Little Duval when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking in with Little Duval. He's here. Charlamagne? We had uh, Gerard Carmichael on. Yeah. He said, um... <laughs> he, said <laughs> he said, comedy is a dying art. I what mean, about it just evolved, you know. Yeah. It just evolved. It's, we look at stand-up because that's all we got, but stand-up mm -hmm. is damn near like jazz now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's still there, but it's evolving to that I'm doing. Social media now, you know what I'm saying? Even yeah. though they ain't comedians, but we program over 15, 20 years of social media to make them think that they're comedians. So the public think that's that's comedian. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's just all it is. It's, I don't see no difference. I mean, stand-up is stand-up, and... It just evolved into something else. Is it an attentive audience at y'all shows? Because you got you, you got DC, all these. It people is out. the way way we do it. Okay. You know the way we do it. You make it attentive. Right? At least the way I do it. You know what I'm saying. I make sure I make sure the whole show good. I try to make make the balance to where it's a good time where we having a, a comedy party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, party. Yeah, it's a comedy exactly party. You know what I'm saying. So when say friends, if, if if you ain't into the party part, you can be in the comedy part. If you ain't in the comedy part, you can be in the into the party party. The, the so party you, so you party. Like the party party. Yeah. So the I'm just party. both. I'm Give I give it all and that's what it is. You flew up on the jet? Nah, I flew commercial. It, it costs it costs too much to fly up here in the, in New York airport and the gas way more here. But y'all here this weekend? You in Atlantic City Saturday? No, nah, I'm in Baltimore first, and I go to Atlantic City. Okay, I'm gonna okay. fly back, oh, get so my plane. You. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna fly back, get my plane, and we are gonna go there and go to Atlantic City and come back. Well, we happy that you uh, decided to come here this morning so you don't get fined, man. We appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. I appreciate um, Black Effect and you and Dolly for being patient with me because they been gave me the money for this. I don't even know if I got them. I think Clay got it. Clay definitely Damn. got the money. <laughs> wow. So I don't even know if I even got all of it. But, but Clay wanted it to be all of y'all. Honestly, that's really the real you, reason why I did it. It's just me and Clay was supposed to do this together. You know what I'm saying? So, so once he died, I just feel like it's my obligation to do this because I I mean, mm. I was really doing it for him. You've been telling me to do it, and I've been pushing this forever. Yeah. And then once Clay started talking to me, I was laying on that goddamn bed, I ain't had shit else going, doing. Mm. I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then once we start talking about it, and he started talking about what he wanted to do, it started making more sense to me. And then he died. I've been telling you, mm. you've been working too hard. Yeah, I really have. Like, for people out here stealing <laughs> money, but no, really, you want to It's kind of hard. I just like doing what I do. I, it's hard for me just sitting here and, and see this as entertainment, just sitting here rambling. And that's all podcast is to me. Mm -hmm. But maybe you had to just chill out. Maybe you... I mean, I do like it now. Things. I mean, and I see the... Because I see the impact of it just with my my show. I just seem like it's doing pretty good. So I guess I was supposed to do it. Like, a lot of stuff I don't like to do, but I do it if my friends and family tell me I should do it. And mm -hmm. a, lot of that type, a lot of that type of stuff has actually worked in my favor. So I listen to people that I trust, yeah. which is people like this yeah, and people like Clay and like that. You got you got guests? Yeah, I got guests on there. Uh, Every episode. It's him yeah, in like conversation with different people. Yeah, it's just me oh, talking okay. to people. People talking to me, trying to give me, trying to ask me for advice and just mm -hmm. ask me advice on life, not on business, mm -hmm. not on, on entertainment, just regular life stuff. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, I think we got enough gurus on on, on goddamn business to and yeah. how to get money and we see where that took us you not a fan <laughs> of seminars hell nah <laughs> you know that <laughs> <laughs> I don't get enough credit for how many how much I done turned down from not f***ing over our people <laughs> mm. I hit him a couple I ain't gonna lie I ain't gonna say nothing <laughs> yeah man let's no, be <laughs> They are too goddamn censored for an interview. No, no, no. I am just, censored now. It's just not so much for me. It's just I understand how, especially nowadays, people looking for shit to grab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I ain't finna give it to them. I ain't, I've never been a to try to go viral. It just, it just, just happened. happened. Yeah. You know, so you won't get it. Downstairs, TMG just tried to run up on me. I sang a gospel song this day. <laughs> 
Keen or what? What you about? I don't know. I just started singing gospel. I said, God is on my side. <laughs> and she I just walked kept, away. And she was like, what the f***? She ain't know what to do. <laughs> well, listen, download Lil Duval's Conversations with Unk. Available everywhere you listen to podcasts. Go check out the Hold weed. on, what else am I forgetting? The Weed yeah, and Ones Comedy Tour. On? Weed and Ones Comedy Tour. You got the Rich Broke Store in Rich Jacksonville. Rich Broke Store. Yeah, I just opened up. Well, I ain't opened it up yet. I'm building it right now. She be opened up by the time we the uh, Weed and Ones Tour hit Jacksonville. We on in Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's over there on the north side on Bunky Hill, right off Edgewood. If you're from Jacksonville, you know what it is. So it's right man. in the hood. You know, I did that just for my community, just to have a storefront for everybody to come show love. And yeah. I be selling like my merchandise, my old lady's little lip gloss and stuff she got <laughs> going on, this, a little healing cream, the stuff to heal all the scars that are on my body. So, mm-hmm. and what else I got? Did Duval you learn Day. A lot of that stuff Duval work? Day on uh, July 13th. I do Duval, Duval, Duval Day. Day. Y'all come on In down there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's some hood. Shit. Like if you remember Black College Weekend or Freak Neek, it's like that, but safer. And you won't go to jail for doing nothing crazy. You had Sexy Red out there early. Oh, you yeah, yeah, like two yeah, years ago, yeah. Right? Now, that was last year. That was last year? Yeah, that shows you how, damn, how much a year can change, man. A year can change. Like, I just knew when I saw her on, on social media, I was like, nah, she next. And then when she came to Jacksonville, and I saw how, how Jacksonville was a receptive to her, yeah. I was like, oh, nah, she finna go yeah. somewhere. Because she, she represent really what the street said, and she done apologetic. And what was really the hardest thing about it, why I respect her, when she had that baby, she didn't get her body done. Mm. She just, mm-hmm. and that's what a lot of, I think that's what a lot of people connected with her. She didn't get her body done, so she was just like a real hood. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I f- with her. Did you yeah. realize all that healing cream and stuff worked when you was going through your healing process? <laughs> Hell no, nah, I realized, I did everything, man. Everything Dolly told me to do, everything I tried. Dev. Every, yeah, Dev. Shout yeah. out Dev, man. Dev, she spoke to me and she she did all that stuff that she do. All that. Rinky, was, man. So yeah, I don't know what it's called, Rinky. <laughs> I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I don't know the, the terminology, but all that work, man. So yeah. anything that I tell y'all to do that they work for me, it kind of work. <laughs> Let me tell it. Yeah. So yeah, man. Lil Duval, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. It's Lil Duval, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club on this Friday. Good morning. That's right. Salute our guy, Lil Duval, for pulling up, man. Make Shout sure you um, I missed Lil Duval yesterday. Yeah, he was uh, in Alabama. Alabama. Mm-hmm. Make sure you download uh, Lil Duval's podcast, Conversations with Unc, mm-hmm. on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. That's and right. They'll be in Atlantic City this weekend, too, for the uh, We Didn't Once Tour tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Baltimore as well. Tonight, right? I believe Baltimore tonight, and then yeah. he come back up here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Well, let's get to Jess with the mess. <clears throat> News is real. Weather is real. Lines, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Just don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a culture shift. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. So I'm sensitive to this case because I am pregnant and stuff like this ruffles my feathers. So the judge finds Indianapolis mother who admitted to smothering her two-month-old baby to death while high on meth, not guilty. And Judge Mark Stoner ruled within the last hour that Daisha Lacey Mm. did not commit a criminal act of neglect that resulted in her two-month-old baby's death. Lacey allegedly admitted in a police interview that she smothered her child while she was high on meth and tired. She allegedly put a pillow on the baby's face to make her stop crying. Lacey's other daughter, who was only three at the time, testified that she saw her mom put a pillow on her baby's face. But there was no medical or physical evidence presented at trial Mm. to show that the baby was smothered or that she died from suffocation. Court accordingly enters judgment of not guilty, reluctantly. I do hope that you all take the opportunity to get the counseling that you need, to get the counseling for the children that you need. That you learn from this behavior and hopefully the rest of the community learns from this behavior that you cannot go out and party on the weekend and be with children. Well, how did the baby die then? Exactly, right? And then and then you had a three-year-old testify against the mother. She said she saw her mommy put a pillow on her little <laughs> sister's face and so she stopped crying. And the mommy admitted to it. And the mommy admitted to it as well. And she was right? found not guilty? Found not guilty. Found not guilty. What state was this? Uh, Indianapolis. Well, who, well, who's um, so judging the judge? Who exactly? So that's that's <laughs> why I also wanted to point out this case because that caused me to do some some digging in his history, and I found that he also had another case that he was previously criticized for in, in Indianapolis. 
The Indianapolis Police Union is calling for a Marion County Superior Court judge to resign. Yeah, officers, they are outraged and calling for judicial reform after the sentence given to the man who shot and killed IMPD officer Brianne Leith. What started as a death penalty case ended with a sentence of time served, a little less than four years for killing a police officer. Now Elias Dorsey received an additional 25 years in prison for the attempted murder of his girlfriend, but that's far less than the maximum sentence the prosecutors asked for now is he not sending these people to prison because he's getting them some type of help because i know in that case the guy was mentally ill and the woman was on meth so is he giving them like rehab or sending them to mental health facilities what is he doing he's just letting no. off yeah he he released the mother to go mm. home like no he didn't get her any help he and then this is the crazy thing too now the three-year-old is still in her care yeah, like this wow. is what you do you get high you a junkie so now you still go back home with your three-year-old who just saw you kill our sister. Well, they add, well isn't it something called postpartum something where postpartum the, the, depression? Yeah, yeah, where the moms hate the babies or something yeah. like that, and that's like a something. But, but I ain't hear none of that there though. Mm. Yeah, nope, none of that. Yeah, you know, that's wild. and um, so so that's crazy. There is a petition online for him to step down. Not only are um IMPD officers upset with him, but residents um of Indianapolis are upset with him as well. So they're looking for Lord, uh, reform. Mercy. Mm -mm. Yep. Uh, in lighter news, Neo confirms uh, romances with multiple women. I feel like in the realm of love and romance, you should let people do whatever the hell they want to do. Can't see how it's hurting anybody. Because to, to be honest, I don't need I don't need the government to tell me what it is I can and can't do. Yeah. It's my personal life. This is the first time that I've been in a uh, relationship or situation like this. So and how is it? That no songs about it will come to pass. They'll come. I love it. I just, I don't force it when it comes to music. It happens naturally. It happens you, organically. You recommend the situation you're in now? Uh, no. No. Why? I don't recommend anything to anybody. <laughs> uh, what works for me might not work for you, and vice versa. What the hell is Neil talking about? I have no idea, but they pulled up on him when he was walking with two women. So, okay. you know, he has two girlfriends at the time or whatever they would call themselves. But um, He's a po in a <clears throat> Polynesian sauce relationship. Okay. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And he also was saying, like, I, I do like how he said, I don't recommend this for anybody. Like, I'm just doing what I'm doing. Correct. You can choose to do whatever you want to do. But he he's seems to be basking in this new romance. He loves it. And he's also... um. They was talking about he making uh, making music about polygamy. So mm. he seems like he's happy. If he's yeah, happy, if he his happy, personal life. Dropping the clues bombs from Neil. He got yeah. two ladies calling him big head. What? You call the person big head that you want to get back with, not the one that you with. They don't become big head until you gone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can tell him ain't nobody want him back. <laughs> no, I ain't been out here in these streets in a long time. I just right. thought that was a term of endearment. And I like can tell nobody ever wanted you back because that's the only way you'll be called Big Head. Mm -mm. All right. Elephant Man says he's he's a father to 38 children. Jesus. Yup, and he said he's open to having more kids too. 38? Mm -hmm. 38. Elephant Man. They don't call him Elephant for nothing. <laughs> that trunk's swinging all over the place. You think? All right. I mean, I guess. <laughs> right. um, Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan go on a beach date. Relation status in question. This is why both of them clowns should stay off of line about each other. Um, Beyonce called me crazy country documentary headed to Max. So she's also dropping a country documentary. Okay, B. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this too. Ty Young reveals that she uh, signed on as assistant coach for the Chicago Sky. Congratulations. Y'all know, know Ty Young out there? That's, um, well, she was on Love and Hip Hop very briefly, mm -hmm. but um, I love her. She's, she's like, Great energy all the time. That's a uh, Mimi Faust ex girlfriend. Um, that's all for my news. I mean, I said it ain't much going on out there, but yeah, that's that's about it. Okay, all right. Well, that is just with the mess. Okay, look, I've been doing my thing. You been doing your thing? I really have. You know what I'm saying? Like I chose to dig up that judge's past. That's right. You know, because I want to know if the judge get high off meth too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And his last name is Stoner. His last name is Stoner. Yes, it's, it's Judge Mark Stoner. Mm. Mm hmm. So that's why I said, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him, but can, yeah. Can you take Charlamagne serious with those stupid ass headphones? No, I don't. What the way he looking at me? Because I don't care. <laughs> what no, What does I this have to do with me? Because, why can I just sit over here because you be and get over ready there. to do my job? Yeah, no, because Jesus you over Christ. there looking like you got something to say. <laughs> no, I no, don't. You always do. <laughs> okay, and yes, I do. Mm. Okay, and guess what? When I don't have nothing to say, I don't be wanting to say it, but then y'all say something to me to make me want to say something. <laughs> All right, so say it. No. <laughs> Okay. That's just the best for Friday. You know, All right. Uh, Charlamagne, we give you a donkey too. Man, four after the hour, uh, I did something like this a couple of months ago because I don't know where this uh, 
this new um uh, this trend of using corpses to get money is coming from. Oh, yeah, but crazy. a young woman named Erica needs to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with her. All right, we'll yes. get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Boy, wake up. Wake up. You're locked into the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Fake Some donkey of the days just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlamagne. I was ready for it. Donkey I never heard of donkey the other day. What is it? I'm a donkey. Say it again, Charlamagne. I'm a donkey. Yes. You are a donkey. I'm so to act a donkey. Everything. Charlemagne is saying it's true. Yes, donkey today for Friday, April 19th goes to a woman named Erica Dusu. No, let me say this over. Erica Da Souza Viatra Nunes. Okay, she is 42 years old and was arrested Tuesday. Now, mind you, she is in Brazil, but the hee haw is global. And this hee haw is warranted because about a month ago, I gave two Ohio women donkey of the day for doing something similar. And by something similar, I mean using a dead body, a corpse to get some money out the bank because Erica was arrested after taking her dead uncle to a bank to take out a loan. She must have done this in the afternoon because she clearly is not a morning person. Let's go to Fox 26 Houston for the report, please. Police say a 42-year-old woman named Erica De Souza walked into a bank pushing the body of a dead man. Mm. It was in a wheelchair. Souza could be seen using the lifeless body like a puppet. She attempted to nod the guy's head and make it appear as if he were signing approval for a $3,200 bank withdrawal. Mm. The man mm. is dead. Mm. Employees didn't fall for the antics. They got suspicious when the man wasn't breathing. And he happens to be pale. Mm. Sousa was arrested, and now she's added to our batch of crazy-ass criminals. Oh. <laughs> what news Jesus, was that? Yeah. Fox 26 Houston. Damn. I'm going to for Fox 26. Crazy-ass <laughs> humans. Okay. Right. You telling it like it is? Yeah. Uh, there are so many reasons this is insane. Number one, you don't take a dead person to a bank. Everyone knows that a corpse's favorite currency is crypto. Okay. But All right. Uncle. She took her 68 year old <laughs> dead uncle to a bank to get a loan of three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Do you see the types of chances people are taking for what some folks would call small amounts of money? OK, folks do not understand how bad a lot of people are out here doing. Three thousand two hundred and fifty may be nothing to you, but three thousand two hundred and fifty is a lot of other people's life savings. Now, the police chief said that the man was probably dead for a couple hours. Can you imagine someone dying, your uncle, your family member? And the first thing you think about is how to get some money for yourself. No regard for the life this man just lived. There is no way this man becomes her spirit guide. I refuse to be one of your ancestors you call on when you need spiritual backing if this is how you treat my corpse after I'm gone. Furthermore, this has to be some sort of necrophilia. You all know what necrophilia is, right? Mm -mm. It's a sexual attraction to corpses. No, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I wasn't looking that up. Yeah, a.k.a. the urge to crack a cold one open. And whenever I hear stories of people doing anything with a corpse except for taking it to a funeral home to be laid to rest, then I think they're a weirdo. Okay, Erica, during an interview with police, told officers she routinely cared for her uncle, who was also debilitated. If that's the case, if you was doing what you were supposed to be doing, if you was treating this man right, taking care of him, then you should be in his will somewhere. Okay, wills are a way for corpses to speak. That's what you create your will for, to be able to speak from the grave so that the, the still living can know what you want. That's why we call wills dead giveaways. Furthermore, whenever I see cases like this, I believe they should investigate the cause of death because every single one of these cases is like finding a cartoonist dead in their home. It's very sketchy, okay? Because if you will in my corpse to the bank to take money out, how do I know this person bringing the corpse to the bank didn't unalive me to make me a corpse? Now, this woman, Erica, is being charged with fraud and abuse of a corpse, and she should be because playing with corpses is not funny, okay? Corpses aren't funny. They are dead serious, and it's a damn shame people don't respect the dead. But you know why people don't respect corpses? Because we don't respect the living. Mm -hmm. To me, these stories are prime examples of how we as humans don't truly respect each other. Alive or dead. The bones of the fallen should be treated with respect and accorded the dignity that was their proper due, if only... The living were also granted such grace. What a wonder our world would become. I got that from an inspirational reel. You know those reels that have like the videos of the waterfalls and beautiful greenery with the flutes playing? Got my attention and I feel like it totally fit here. But the moral of the story is if you want to play with corpses, become a mortician or a funeral director. Jess Hilarious used to be one. I went to school to be a coroner slash mortician. And what happened? I didn't make it through. How many jobs did you have? He talked about you this morning at McDonald's. Now the court. 
Mm-hmm. I had a lot of jobs, MB. Okay. Well, funeral <laughs> directors and morticians, we need more of those because they are dying professions. Uh, please give it. Yeah, very much. Boo. Please give it. A clown. Boo. Please give Erica Nunez the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Okay. Oh, now you are the donkey. Wow, yo. Of the day. to know why a funeral director started a podcast <laughs> he wanted to talk about bodies of work boom yeah very much clown boom out. I can't even believe nah, that ain't it y'all <laughs> yeah I can't even believe that you would even be really laughing at that it's so, hilarious you have any it's, more it's not dying like what a dying profession people die every day so actually that's the reason why I wanted to be a motivation I was like you know what people ain't gonna never stop you know, dying so like, Never. What made you yeah. do that? Like, what made you say I want to be a mortician? Because every job that I would, I kept getting fired from, like from people who are alive. So you figured the dead so couldn't like, fire you. Know you. What? Yeah, no, no. But the dead will make you scared, Joe. And I watched too many movies, and it's just like you believe in ghosts and stuff like that. Yeah, I believe yeah. in a bunch of stuff, and I was like, Mm-mm, you know, no, why ghosts can't have me. babies? Why? Because they got Halloweenies. <laughs> 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 That's what the ghost said. Boo. You know what? <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you for that dog, never dog of the day, man. I never for that. When we come back, country singer Britney Spence will be joining us. Okay. Hey. She is on Beyonce's Blackbird song. That's right. And she's got an album out called My Stupid Life. She's leading, uh, she's one of the people leading this new renaissance of black women in country music, black people in country music. But oh. has been doing country for a while when she's from Baltimore City. That's right. <laughs> That's so. right. And we're going to talk to her next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, yes. indeed. We have Brittany Spencer. Welcome. What Hi. up, baby? Baltimore's What's own. Up? Yes. What's up, y'all? How are you, Brittany? I am good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm a little nervous because I've just been watching y'all for years. And so, like, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. this is fire. Thanks for having me. That's amazing. From Baltimore. Y'all don't get nervous about nothing. What part of Baltimore are you from? I've lived everywhere. Like, to give context, I went to four elementary schools. Okay. Yeah, so I've lived... Gosh, my family live in like Randallstown and Lockern. Gotcha. Um East and West. That's two different. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I went to uh, school in Towson. I could sing. And so it let me go to like magnet schools all through middle and high school. Mm-hmm. And so I could sing opera. And so that kind of like I didn't have to go to my zone school. Mm-hmm. And so I, we moved around like a bit, quite a bit sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but I just didn't have to like change schools. But I've been everywhere. How did you end up in Nashville from Baltimore? Baltimore girl <laughs> all around Baltimore. To Nashville. People always ask me that. I mean, <laughs> I I found out about country music because of the radio. My friend Keisha at church was like, "You need to listen to the chicks." Back then, they were Dixie, Dixie chicks. Dixie chicks. Yeah. yeah, they were the gateway. I feel like they always the gateway. Mm-hmm. Everybody I meet, they just the gateway. That's how me and Raina Roberts connected the first time because we were like just loving Dixie chicks. And, yeah. Um, but uh, my friends, they told me to listen to them, and I did. And I just fell in love. I feel like Baltimore is like very like um, it's very musical. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can you can go and you can sing in church, but also you can go and listen to music down at Peabody. You yep. got a lot of art schools there. You got like Carver and Baltimore School for the Arts, um, but also country radio is consistently the highest ranked in Maryland. And mm-hmm. So you got a lot of everything, mm-hmm. and I feel like people kind of appreciate it. You know, it's a lot of different sides of Baltimore, and so that was kind of my introduction to it. And I kind of. Just fell in love and kept going and finally decided years later to make the move and at least give it a try. I had no idea if this thing was actually going to work, but mm-hmm. I was like, it's worth a try. I might as well fail at something that I actually really like as opposed to like succeeding at doing something I don't want to do. So what did your TV dad show? say being a DJ, especially a hip hop and R&B DJ? When you said, dad, <laughs> yeah. I want to do country, like that ain't in Maserato. <laughs> yeah, he was like, nah, you need to move to Atlanta. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I know he was nervous and my whole family was kind of nervous actually, but I'm... Um, but he got it, you know, and especially like now, like my family, like honestly, sometimes they be just as shocked as I am. Like, oh my God, this is actually like happening and working. I'm like, I, I never knew if it would actually really work. I just kind of decided that I wanted to try and just give it a real shot. Like I was prepared to, to for it to not work, I guess, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I mean, preparing for it to work is a whole other conversation. But, you know, they just they're on board they love it they love what i'm doing mm-hmm. and i mean i think what i do is kind of much bigger than myself you know mm-hmm. um and uh and i kind of take that responsibility seriously and but like it's been very real for me for a long time like 
You just didn't know. Was it, yeah. Was it tough being accepted in the country community as a black female country artist? I mean, for a lot of us, I think it's, it's challenging. Like, mm -hmm. trying to get people to understand sometimes what we're doing. But I feel like there are a lot of creatives that are really open um, to kind of this this reformation happening in Nashville. Um, I mean, in addition to, like, just what we look like, we're bringing our culture, too. Like, just like how you say you listen to everything, mm -hmm. like, I do, too. And that you can hear that in my music. Is, is country music uh, more racist or sexist? Gosh, I think radio right now, like, 10% of their airplay is women right, mm. right now. But I don't think they're playing black women right now much. I don't know. Both of them is just a struggle, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't. I feel like the industry is kind of pushing for change in that department. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of in need of a little... A little overhaul mm -hmm. in a lot of departments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just hoping to see that something changes. But yeah. in the meantime, my black woman ass is right here. That's you right. Know, I got a little album and you know whatever. Yeah, how, my speaking of your life. album, how, yeah. <laughs> so why is it called my stupid life? I want to. And, and is it stupid life <laughs> or stupid. is it or you know what? Why why you call it that? <laughs> It's called My Stupid Life, probably because, in part because I'm from Baltimore, like, we greet each other like, what's up, dummy? Yeah, yeah. Like, probably yeah. like that. So we say, disrespectful to each other. It's, That's crazy. It's, it's a love. Of endearment and it's love. Thank okay, you. Dummy. And if you from somewhere else, you can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them that every day. Girl, so, <laughs> your stupid life. It's because I feel like life is, uh, you know, it's wonderful, it's highs, it's lows, it's ups and downs, mm. it's like... It's um, it's a lot of things, and and ultimately, when I'm thinking about just the things that make me feel most present, I'm just I don't know, like the best and worst things happen at the same time sometimes, and yeah. for me, that's kind of how I think about my stupid life, and and with the album, it's just no one song sounds like the other, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that yeah. was on purpose, like, and so it's just I don't know, it just felt like a conglomerate, but also I mean, really, I wasn't trying to name the album that I was really just kind of figuring out like which song title off of the album was the most appealing to me gotcha. and when i was writing the song my stupid life i just kind of i was like oh this is actually kind of cool i would mm -hmm. listen to an album called my stupid life right but also i mean i come from that era of like my so-called life and like stuff like that and so it was i don't know it just felt like nostalgic to me in a way something like that is just interesting coming from where i'm from because you don't see mm -hmm. country singers mm -hmm. coming out of our city you yeah. know what i mean every day no. Or or even every year, this is not, this is something that you see every once in a while. Honestly, yeah. I think you're probably the only one. So like, <laughs> if you know what I know, to be honest. And so I know even a Beyonce would take a liking to that. Like, hold up, like you know. So how did that even happen? Like, how did that link up happen? Because you're on Blackbird mm -hmm. on the Cowboy Carter album. Yeah. How did that happen? I don't actually know. Hmm. Like, all I know is is that I'm there and I. It's, it's wild and it's insane like being on that record um, I feel like one is just breaking a lot of musical boundaries mm -hmm. like for what kind of music people can make it's, it's kind of disrupting I think a lot of the industry and also yeah. disrupting like just even the creative process I think like I feel like creatives might take the boxes off a little bit you know and, and not you know be as you know not I don't think we've been rigid but like we'll be even more mm -hmm. explorative and also not feel like in order to be marketable, you have to be this one thing. Yeah. You know, that's always a, a huge thing. Like, I mean, like, am I marketable? Am I commercial? Will people like this? You know, especially if you want to be a commercial artist. And uh, it's, I don't know, I feel like it's taking the limits off of that. And being a part of that record, like, I was I was just telling uh, Kevin uh, the other day. Kevin Lyles. Kevin Lyles mm -hmm. over here. I was just telling him, <laughs> I was like, yo, put my album out in January and it opens up with birds chirping. Mm, and it opens wow. up with this I know right wow. and it opens up with this song called New to the Town and it's in the same key as Blackbird almost mm. the same tempo I'm just like this is this is wow this is beautiful yeah. it's uh it's it's like you can't orchestrate stuff like that I mean yeah. I, I talk about Beyonce on my album like Anna Raven is a Blackbird Baltimore Ravens I don't know I hey no, it is. It's, it's made it is. It's made it is. But well, no. how did it happen? Did she call you? Did somebody call you? Was the record like how did the record come together? Uh, I ain't really talk about that yet. I ain't okay. gonna lie. Yeah. I mean, I feel like like I feel like as an artist, like I want to respect like her creative process, and mm -hmm. and I feel like whenever she's ready to talk about this, she mm -hmm. will, and I want to leave that for her. I yeah. love her. I admire her, and also she's Beyonce, and like. You know, she'll she'll tell the story. You won't f it up either, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean <laughs> yeah. that, and all. I mean, but also like for real, like on a very heart level. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, 
I don't know. People have plans for how they want to like reveal mm-hmm. stuff. That's and, true. Yeah. And I just want to wait. Like I just makes sense. Yeah. Like I want to, and plus I want to cherish this. Like I'm, the, I'm also the same person who like will hold on to something for a long yeah. time, and like not share it with nobody, and like. I don't know. Like even with my album, I had like a little leather keychain. I had the title of it on there. I've been, I had it around. People have my keys. I lose my keys, all kinds of stuff. I mm. go back to the store to get it. I've had my stupid life written on all kinds of things mm. for a year. I had it on, um, like engraved on one of my shirts. Like nobody yeah. saw it. Nobody knew. But like it was just like my little thing. All right, we got more with Britney Spencer. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking in with country singer Britney Spencer. Charlamagne? The other black female country <laughs> artists. You mentioned Raina, mm-hmm. but then there's uh, Tana Adele, Tiara Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Were y'all all familiar with each other and cool with each other before y'all? Did yeah. This? Okay. So, nice. in a sense, I, me and Raina have been really good friends for a few years. Me mm-hmm. and Raina, we met... Um, back in 2020, 2021. And Tanner, we met, I want to say we met like last year for the first time. I've, I've, I've literally only been around her a handful of times, but we've like been just really friendly. We have like a, a common interest in edible glitter. Mm. Um, edible <laughs> okay. glitter? Yeah. Yeah. Put it in your drinks. You don't put, you don't do that? in it? It's no, like, yeah, I'm like, oh, mine does, but <laughs> oh yeah, but, but that's the no, I don't have THC in it. I just I oh. put the thing, you know, I do the thing. I, okay, I, I, yeah, I got but, you. Never but no, it's just regular, just Amazon. Okay, edible glitter, and so that was something that we you just kind of glitter talked about. in your drink. Yeah, you you know because it makes the drink really pretty, yes. but it's still edible. So exactly, you can, I got you. Like okay. put a little a little gold dust on your like rose or something. I mean, anyway, but then we connected with that online. Um, and, <laughs> and so like it's just been I don't know it's just been mutual respect and just like little things like that um, yeah. I've known Tierra for a few years um, we worked together back in 2021 and so yeah I mean I feel like we all kind of like started mm-hmm. meeting each other when life got busy mm-hmm. like around 2020 when the conversation around black country really kind of started ramping up and so I don't know I feel like artists are just kind of like passing ships through the night and so mm-hmm. it was it's really cool to be able to kind of like have a moment with an artist because I mean the beautiful and also sad part is that like you really got to live in that moment when you're with somebody that is in the same field as you because once this moment is over like you might not see each other for a really long time right. like I have friends that I've connected with so deeply like over tour or something and it was two months and, and I haven't seen him in two years now wow. and so I know I'll be going through withdrawals I'm like oh my god my friend we yeah. share such a beautiful moment and also now we only see each other anymore right now just because life is just yeah. hectic it's kind of hard yeah, life is life and I know y'all was, know about that more than me. Was there a country music before Beyonce and after Beyonce? Like, have, how have you benefited from her being in the country music space now? Oh gosh, I mean, even just some of the stuff that I was saying, like mm-hmm. with uh, kind of breaking those musical barriers and and kind of like who gets to represent the South or like or or just the stories that get to be told or the way that is told. Like even just sonically, I feel like people might even be a little more explorative mm-hmm. um, on their albums, like. My personal favorite album is Lemonade, like of all time. Yes, that's, that's my right. album. When I heard that album, it uh, like no one song sounded like another, mm-hmm. and it was it was really like it shook up my head a lot. And I feel like if people listen to my album, My Stupid Life, like you can hear that. Yeah, you can hear where I just wanted to have storytelling and in country music at its core, just be the thread through each song. But sonically, it's going to be a little rock and country. It's going to be a mm-hmm. little. A little R and B in country. It's gonna be a little pop in country. Like it's it's like I feel like I have that thread, and I feel like um, gosh, I feel like we're gonna hear more albums like that, you know. Mm. But my a lot of that is inspired by an album that she made, you know, years ago. And so mm. I feel like right now people are just gonna be more explorative, like creatively. But also I feel like she's also bringing a really interesting fan base to country music. Definitely. And uh, and the talent is there, and. Uh, and it's our job to keep them here, you know? You know I, was, I have no yeah. idea what her next record is going to be, but hopefully, you know, the people that are here and interested in, in, in what this whole moment is uh-huh. because of Beyonce, hopefully mm. they, you know, want to stick around because there's some incredible talent here. And I think she's done an incredible and, and generous uh, thing in spotlighting a lot of it on Cowboy Carter. It's like my last question, but because um, it made me think of this quote I saw you say, where you said, if I could go back when you first moved to Nashville, if I could go back, I would tell myself to use that time to find more of myself. If you're not finding your people, at least find yourself. Mm. Expound on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, finding yourself is hard. Like knowing who you are is hard. And I think half of the battle is figuring out what you're not. 
you know, and that's that's a little easier. At least that came a little easier for me. Um, but just figuring out who you are, it'll help attract the right people. You know, like I feel like sometimes I've spent so much time in life, like not knowing who I am or what I want to do or knowing my worth. And I attracted people who weren't interested in finding that out either. And that's I feel like how I got a lot of my uh, you my heart broken sometimes. I feel like that's where I got like let down and just opening up to people who can only meet you as far as they've met themselves too. You just have two broken people just just trying to figure out why you keep crashing. And I mm-hmm. just I feel like know who you are. You it'll save you and a lot of people a whole lot of time. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay. Everybody ain't for everybody. And you don't need to do everything, you know? Like people pleasing and and just all that stuff. It's just a lot of that is just not knowing who you are. And um I don't know. I wish I could go back in time. I mean, I, I don't. I won't say I have regrets. I don't really have regrets. I just have like, if I could have a little do over, you know, mm-hmm. I do that. This is my last question. Speaking of when you were talking about sweet things happening, you're going on tour with Willie and Bob, <laughs> Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan. Girl, how I've been you, on the road with Willie for three years, and it just it never ceases to amaze me that like I get to do this like. The amount of people, like, I'm excited to be on the road with Willie. I've never toured with Bob before, Bob yeah. Dylan. And I think, I don't know, like. You ain't never smoked with Willie, though. Nah, but I have had uh, mm-hmm. some of his weed. He got this uh, this company called Willie's Reserves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, like, they just be pulling up on you in your dressing room. They just, like, knock on the door, mm-hmm. you know, and they just be like, I got you something. They got they got the canister. The canister is fire. I keep the mm-hmm. canister. Yeah. I got, I mean, I, I ran out of that weed. But I. I pre rolls or yeah, not bad? Pre rolls, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just I ran out of You know, so you ain't like falling asleep, you know? And so. Yeah. And so I. I, I love Willie. I did meet yeah. him. I sang with him. Like, he always invites like everybody that's like, that's been on the stage before him to come and sing with him at the end of the night. Mm. And he just, like, he's the sweetest. Like, he blew me a kiss one time in the middle of the song. He was like, Mwah. And I was like, Willie, I love you so much. Mm. And so it's just, it's an honor. Like, mm-hmm. especially when an artist is 90 years old. Yeah. Like, wow. to be able to do this in their lifetime. Like, that's how I feel. Like, and uh, I mean, I've, I've gotten to do this a few times. Like, three years with Willie. I've toured with, uh, I mean, she's not at, at his age yet. Uh, but Reba, I've toured with her. Oh, my God. I opened up for Bruce Springsteen last year. Um, I'm excited about Bob Dylan this year. Gosh, like, I just, I don't know. I get excited. I wow. get excited. But I'm I also so get excited about the you. younger ones, too. Yeah. I opened up for Megan Thee Stallion. That was fun. First of all, yeah, it's for real. That was fire. That's what's In up. Baltimore. In Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, I did. That was fun. Um, I love touring. Mm-hmm. I really do. Yeah. I love touring, and I well, you love it now. Yeah, I loved it before too. That was the hard part. I was like, "Yo, why am I but zapping no more out? Vom- no more vomit, none of that. No, because Bob and Willie don't want to. We, we not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I go up to sing on the last song, and I'm just you know just projectiles. Yeah, like, and, like, and then he done blew a kiss, and you talking about Ugh. like don't don't do that. <laughs> That's right. But I love touring. I'm yeah. having a great time, and like I said, I'm the opening act right now, and I'm having a great time yes. because. People have been very kind and embracing me and it's cool to like even just watch the stages that have let me on like just as a country artist being able to say like in the same year you opened up for for Reba and Megan Thee Stallion and and Marin Morris and a Sheryl Crow like that's that's an eclectic lineup of yeah. of people but I I like being the kind of artist that has songs for all those stages and I'm going to keep doing it. I'm so proud of you, y'all. Brittany, Thank we you. appreciate Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. My Stupid Life is okay. out right now. Pick it up. Brittany Spencer. Listen to Blackbird on Beyonce's Cowboy Carter. That's hey. right. And it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank you. Thank y'all. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious. Y'all, I mean, the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to pass the ox. Go, 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 go. Come spin, come spin. What's up, Nyla? Good morning. Hey, girl. Big Nyla. Happy Friday. What's happening? You got a cute little coordinated fit today. Really? From the pants and the hoodie and the, the hood. Okay, Unc, be trying. I'm proud of you. Can you get your Unc's really? new headphones, though? 
Punk headphones yeah. be struggling, new man. Headphones. He be struggling. They be hanging off. I got some new headphones. Relax. Okay, I'm going to start wearing them next week. I just wanted to go through the struggle this week. There's no reason why you should be having any type of struggle headphones when you work in radio. Can somebody send Charlamagne some headphones and just throw when, me in a pair too while we ask? That's, when the, that's when the best content was created. When you didn't have much. When the, the headphones were broken, you had to tape them up and stuff like that. So y'all don't know that struggle. It's 2024. Yeah, I don't know the headphone struggle, but I know struggle. <laughs> I know a different type yeah, of struggle. Right. Yeah. All right. Easy. Speaking of outfits, you look nice. Look like a Hillman alumni. Thank Thank you, thank you. I got my Huxtable nice. sweater on today. So cute. But I'm a St. John's alumni. Shout out to J. Cole. Oh, shout God. Out to my Johnny. No, shout out to your what? mom and dad and student loans. Why J. Cole? I'd rather not shout out to my student loans. Well, shout, my dad's a, my dad's an army vet, so college was paid for. Exactly. Hey. All right. With J. Cole ain't got nothing to do with that. All right, shout out to my pops. Love you, Fadjit. All right, Jesus. moving forward, though. Let's, let's get into the music. Mm -hmm. So Nicki Minaj dropped um, FTCU, F the Club Up remix featuring Travis Scott. Scott, mm -hmm. okay. um, Chris Brown, and Sexy Red. I love, love, love that Travis Scott part. Like, he wrote that. Chris Breezy? No, she said Travis. Breezy, was, Breezy he wrote it. He wrote mm -hmm. it. He cool. You can't you can never go wrong. You think Sexy about the part we played. The part we played? It's cool. <laughs> Why okay. you say it like that? That's cool. think about the part we played? I liked it. I like okay. Sexy's verse the best. Okay. So it's okay. the easiest to learn. I don't want it. Part. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. True. What about you, Charlotte? That's not for me. Mm. What, what you mean? mean? I like that record, though. You do like that record. I do like yeah. that record. So why is the remix not for you? I got to hear the whole thing in context. Like, yeah. you started it in the middle of the song. Oh, okay. No, you know, the, pro <laughs> the problem is, is, is like, I'm, I'm with Charlamagne. Pause. I, I like the original better than the remix. I ain't yeah. heard the whole remix yet. So how you gonna say you with me? I ain't even heard the whole song. So yeah. what I heard so I mean, far, honestly, because as soon as you hear the, the original, it slaps from any part of it. Yeah. But yeah. Any part. Yeah. Yeah. when you're spinning it, are you even playing the verses? You really just playing the hook? Not the club, the, 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 yeah. Now you play the, the full song. Oh, okay. It's All right. sexy red. It's gonna be a sexy red summer. Mm -hmm. I've been yeah, I hope things. so. I agree. Really? But I encourage everybody to listen to the whole song. Yeah. Travis rolled that beat, man. I ain't gonna lie. I don't really like hearing Travis on trap beats. I don't like that. Why, why you say that? Because he's just so heavy auto tune. I'm used to hearing him on yes. like overly produced, like mm -hmm. uh, grainy style. And then hearing him on trap is weird to me. He yeah. actually did that. Like, he actually did the same thing that you talked about it. on it, but it sounds so good synced together. You know what? See, I gotta I hear know. it. Everything, mm -hmm. yeah. different, different things for different people. I got you. Fine. Fair enough. Okay. Um, next up, we got Anaya um, with For the her. Street. Nah, that's dope. That dope. Like Close your eyes dope. when you when in my presence then. If you hate when you see mm. me so much. Mm. <laughs> you ain't never been there? No. They look over him. He's too short. They can't see him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool record, but That's it's dope. hard when you do a classic like that over. But I, people hear the classic, and it's like if it don't get, if it don't get to the level of the classic, you like. Ugh. Well, she did a video and everything for us. So it was and dope. She did. Yeah, mm. and I think the ill part about her version is that it's the complete opposite feeling. Like uh -huh. where at Fantasia, you're like feeling love and you're embracing that. Where with this, it's like I can't stand you. Yeah, like, and it's both like are a, relatable. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I love how she tackles the other side of it, and she got dope, deep vocals. Like did she nice swing vocals. on them by the end of the record. Like, um, no. I remember that nah, part. You don't hate me that much, then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You don't hate me that much. All right. Shout out to Anaya. She's super dope and her project to drop today. Wait, there's more. So definitely tap in with her. Hey. And then lastly, I'm going to get into Bryson Tiller's project. I know it dropped like two weeks ago, but it's mm -hmm. been a lot of music going on. Hey, especially Bryson put out a project? Yes. What yeah, you I mean? I know that. I know that either. Yes, you did. I don't think oh Bryson God. knows he, he put out a project. The, oh, my God. All right. Does let's, Bryson care anymore? Yo, Bryson's project <laughs> is actually really good. Mm. Like, I know first project, classic. The projects after that, we didn't love. But this one is a fan favorite, okay. I would yeah. say. Um, but my favorite one off of it is called Stay Gold. That's hard. That's yeah. hard. Mm -hmm. I do like it. Yay. All right. Mm -hmm. So we got tens across the board today. Yeah. yeah. But why he don't, why, like, I don't, why don't nobody know his music out? Everybody know his music out. You the only one. You knew his music was out, Jeff? It was blowing me is because yeah. when the single dropped, you know, I can't. I, 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 the I, single, I, single, I, single, yo, you I knew the, the single, single dropped, but I didn't know. I didn't know. You knew, yeah. you knew that. You knew. You knew his album was out, right? All right. I'm going to assume because it's Friday, y'all high. Because I came up here did and he I... Do any mark I'm serious. Did he do any marketing? What, where did he promote like the album? Like as far as marketing, Well, he was doing yeah. Lucy's on SoundCloud, which I came up here and said two months ago when he started she did. doing... I remember that. Mention her yeah, yeah, but I didn't put the album out. Yeah, she I also just... said she don't know why. It's only on SoundCloud, though. You did say I did that. say that. Yeah. But now, now it's out. You need to do more marketing. All right. Seriously, well, you need to do some interviews. You need to do some promotion for it. Because it's great music. You want to interview him. Don't I don't want it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not gonna say I don't, His but I don't Lucy's care. Lucy's been bumping now. They have been like whatever she wants. Boom. Yeah. Like yeah, that's, that's, that's still my jam. That record's right. going up. Yeah. And I this one's cool too. Some people nowadays they just want to do the whole. Let me just too throw cool. it out there and see what happens. Like you can't be too cool for school. Mm -hmm. Like you got to go out there and promote that thing. Let me know that it it, it exists. That's fair. I agree. You All know? right. Yep.
I ain't mad at that. Well, speaking of promoting, let me get this off real quick. Make sure you guys tune into my podcast. We need to talk. We drop three episodes a week, uh, two interviews, and then one long form just debating hip hop. Then make sure you guys pull up on me if you guys are in the tri state area. I got a certified vibe RB night going down tonight. Hey, Headlined by Alex Molly and the artist from Jersey. So Jersey's going to be in the building. Heavy Brooklyn's going to be in the building. And I have a very special guest going to perform as well. So That's their name, the artist from Jersey? Yeah, her name is the artist. Okay. Yeah. Nice. But the special guest that's hitting the stage, I'm really excited for it too. I just can't legally say who it is. Oh, but does she know the artist is Prince? Y'all don't know that, do you? He used to call himself the artist? Yes. Oh, no. A Boogie calls himself the artist, too. Really? Yeah. Well, the artist A Boogie. His name is Artist. You gotta get to a yeah, third level. Really Look, man, I don't know. It's artist. a lot of... It's, artists. It's a lot of things. I don't it's like wanna... it's a lot of babies. You know, the baby, little baby, baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Baby face raised. There's a lot you of know, babies. Yeah. Lot. Well, salute to all the artists. Yes. <laughs> yes. From Jersey. Yes. They yeah. know. Just and the artists from Jersey. Yes. Yes. And shout out to the at. It's a certified vibe. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram and follow me at Nyla Simone, N Y L A S Y M O N E E E. All right. Now, when we come back, we got the People's Choice. Make sure you know we throw it back on a Friday. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake up. Wake up. You're locked into the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilaria, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Oscar de la Hoya. Welcome. What's up, brother? Big weekend for you. Yeah. Fight night. Let me, I have to ask one question. Well, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. Ryan Garcia yeah. versus Devin Haney. When you prepare for a fight, the couple of days before the fight, mm-hmm. do you go out? Do you go to restaurants? Or do you just focus and stay in the hotel after training? What, what's usually you would advise yeah. a boxer? Well, what I would advise a boxer is obviously stay in, stay focused, you know, um, you know, focus on your craft, your fight, making weight. It, it all depends. Every fighter is different. Mm-hmm. I've seen Ryan go see in the restaurant yeah. when we last night at 11.30 p.m. What does that mean? Well, yeah, you a snitch, we, we, bro. What? Ryan, Why? Sorry. Learned from the biggest niche in the world. <laughs> yeah. 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 But is he focused? Every, every fighter is different. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I, I'm his promoter. I'm not with him 24-7, mm-hmm. but yeah, you take a look at fighters in the past and it's like, I mean, look at Tyson, right? In, in, in Japan. He lost. Buster so. Douglas. Yeah, he lost. So mm-hmm. it's like you have fighters, you know, like Trinidad or myself or that are focused, you know, and Ryan's different, man. I don't know what it is, but he's just different. And and I saw him every time I see him, he's focused. He's, you know, he's on mm-hmm. it. And, and then every time cameras are around him, he's like, different. he just turns it on. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. yesterday you said, uh, well, not yesterday. You talking about Devin Haney, but are you concerned about Ryan Garcia's mental health in any way? Am I concerned? Mm-hmm. No. Every time I, okay. every time I'm around him, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't really pay attention. Yeah, I see what he's posting and all that, and it's like, okay, yeah, that I, I always think, well, it takes what ten seconds to post, thirty seconds to post, mm-hmm. you know. So, do you think it's a show for to sell tickets to sell a fight? He might be trolling, man. I don't know. I, I mm-hmm. don't know. Now, he recently they say he got asked to leave the Mets game. He was supposed to throw out the first pitch. Yeah. And they threw him out the game. Yeah. Do you know the reason for that was? Or? Yeah. The security. I'm pretty sure somebody in security got fired because um, mm. um, we walked in. Oh, you was with him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was with him. We walked in and he he uh, he goes into the VIP room to wait, you know, and he's warming up. He's excited to throw the pitch. Yeah. I walk in after him and I run into um, I run into the wife of the owner and we start talking and she speaks Spanish. And I'm like, oh, man, she's all excited. Oh, I can't wait for Ryan and throw the pitch. Took pictures and uh, all of a sudden, like 15 minutes later, um, yeah, they tell us, hey, they don't want Ryan, they don't want Ryan or Devin throwing the first pitch because there might be a fight between them. Mm. Between them. Oh, because of what happened at because the Because of what happened at the Empire State. State. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was a, you know, it was a good shove, you know, for yeah. Devin. But and I was like, no, it's all good, it's all good. I'll, I'll be in the middle and I'll take, I'll take care of it. And they said, well, we'd rather have you throw the first pitch. And, uh, you know, th- but they can't do it. So mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to stick to my boy. We're going to get out of here. Let's go. How did you get We're your- Yankees fans anyway, so. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get your relationship back on track with Ryan Garcia? Because he was just pissed off at y'all in December. You know what? You know, it's funny. It's, it's funny because, um, you know, when, when, when the fighter's going to make a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know, things change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Things change. When a fighter loses, things change. Mm-hmm. When a yeah. fighter wins, things change, you know, so... Boxing, but boxing boxers are we're, we're all roller coasters, man. You Was know? there any conversation, any apology? Yeah, or? yeah, no, we talk. We, uh, okay. you know, I I'm here to give him advice. I, I'm probably the closest person, the closest fighter, to give him advice. Because you know, everybody compares us this and that. You know, yeah. our careers are similar or whatever. But um, but no, we're all cool. We're good. Yeah, we're I, good. I, I saw we're you good. say that Devin Haney's uh, losing his composure. Is I think he is, man. Okay. I think he is. See. 
what what Ryan reminds me of is Floyd Mayweather. Okay, mm -hmm. you, you know Floyd Mayweather was the master at talking to man. Mm -hmm. He yeah. was on how to get in, in your head. Mm -hmm. And I, I can see Ryan getting into Devin's head. I mean, Devin, I've never seen Devin push somebody so hard mm. at, at the at the uh, at the at the Empire State Building. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I've, I've never I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, Ryan, I think Ryan's doing something right, man, because he's gonna make weight. Is he gonna make weight? Because that's that oh, was yeah, one thing that yeah, said he might not make I weight. Mean, I mean, I, I hear I hear both guys are are. I think I think they know how to sell the fight. You know, mm -hmm. and it's created a huge buzz, and so. But I think Saturday night it's gonna be so intense. Yeah, I couldn't face these guys off yesterday at the at the press conference. Mm -hmm. I thought they were gonna go at it. Yeah. So, what are your uh, thoughts on a, on this ticket sales? Ticket sales are going great. Not at the Barclays. Yeah, mm -hmm. th tickets. Are, I mean, we're gonna have we're gonna have yeah seventeen thousand people there. That's a damn mm -hmm. lie. They just no, said, no, they, no, just, they said they just no, said that they were having trouble selling no, tickets. No, it's not. It's not. When that changed, Oscar? We we sold. We were at fourteen thousand when I got to New York. Man, somebody lying. We saw lying. all the headlines. Yeah. Yeah. No. Charlamagne said somebody I mean, was giving I, I out can, tickets I can see at the, the front. money in the bank account. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So all these headlines. You seen these headlines? I they said they was them, giving yeah. away tickets at the in the front of the ball yeah. place, and nobody wanted no, to go. No. That's no, no, not true. Come on, it's not true. Mm. I would never do that. Mm. No. You a promoter? You supposed to say that? You can't come on here. No, 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 no. If it wasn't Sally, I would say it's not Sally. But I'll tell you one thing: it hasn't sold out. Which makes me, which makes me, you know, uh, mm. not concerned but surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah, th a fight like this should have sold out like quick. Like I three remember, days. yeah, I remember Ryan saying that that he won. That was a part of the reason why he wanted yeah. to be in Vegas. Yeah, you know, because that's a better selling market for right. fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah why I, was it? I had to bring him in New York. Why? I had to. I had to. They're both LA fighters. Yeah, I figured it'd but, be bigger but, in LA. But I'll tell you one thing: New York is a whole different animal. Man. Mm -hmm. New York, when you fight in New York, when you you're exposed to the audience here, it's just <clears throat> it takes you to another level, man. So yeah, I, I had to bring Ryan here with Devin, and uh, it just made sense. The pay per views matter more, though, right? The pay per view, bar. yeah, and it's going through the roof. It's crazy. Yeah, I believe yeah, we, that. we have numbers that are just, I mean, it's 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 topping fights. This is gonna be like a top top five in the world, man. History, really? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's crazy. I don't I don't doubt that. I mean, Ryan yeah. sells fights. Yeah, I, and and, and I do have draw. to say, I do have to say that that. Uh, my bad on my part. I did. I did um, scale the tickets a little too high. Mm. You know, like the first six, six, seven, first ten rows. Yeah. I think I put them too high. I was. I think I was a little greedy. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah! I was looking. I was like, what? Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I now, was. Now, what would a Ryan Garcia loss mean to his career right now? I think Ryan Garcia. See, there's something special with Ryan Garcia is that you take a look at the tank fight, right? Mm -hmm. He loses. The way he lost got, gets knocked out, but now he's even bigger. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's strange. He's even bigger now, and you know, fighting fighting Devin Haney, it's this is going to be a bigger fight than fighting Tank. Mm -hmm. And so, if he loses, it, it, it does nothing to him. Even I if mean, he gets like knocked out, I think it depends how he loses. It, it just depends on how. Yeah, you're right. It mm -hmm. depends on how he loses. He gets knocked out in one two rounds or whatever. It's like it's not over, but it obviously uh, you know his stock goes down. Mm -hmm. But if it's a great fight. If it's a great fight, a long fight, and he gets stopped in the tenth, eleventh round, and in a great fight, he loses nothing. Mm -hmm. If he wins, damn, <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. think I'm gonna see him for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have we have Oscar De La Hoya here. Of course, the fight is this Saturday. We got more tickets. We got more conversation when we come back. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilaria, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Oscar De La Hoya. The fight is this weekend. Haney versus Garcia. Of course, Oscar De La Hoya is one of the promoters on the fight. Uh, and you think it's going to sell out? It's going to be a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's going to be it's going to be big. If I watch that TV on Saturday and it ain't full, Oscar. Oh no, it will be full. It will okay. be. Full. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. have we'll have seventeen thousand, eighteen thousand people that we want. All right, yeah, now, we will. Now Canelo's back working with Golden Boy to promote his upcoming fight, right? Did I read that correctly? Well, no, no, okay. no. He uh, <laughs> he Canelo Canelo chose my fighter uh, Jaime mm. Munguia to the fight. fight. Yeah, the okay. sequel of my weekend. I like him too, by the way. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a beast, yeah. man. He's yeah, he he. Uh, I, I think it's the changing of the guards. I really do. I really do. I think I think Canelo Canelo's a great fighter, don't get me mm. wrong. He's fought everybody. He's but every fighter has their decline. Every fighter, you know, the wear and tear. He's Canelo's had surgeries on his knees and his shoulders. Um, you mm. know, he had a tough fight in his last uh, you know, outing with uh with uh some guy from the UK mm. and 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 Mungia knocked that guy out mm. in his mm. last fight. So mm. 
I think Munguia being 27 years old, Canelo being 34 on his way out, I think it's a changing of the guards. So if Canelo was still your fighter, would you say he's on a decline? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. He, he so you'd be it, encouraging he got, him to retire now? Will I encourage him to retire? Um, not until he fights uh, Benavidez? Munguia. Oh, Munguia. Okay. Oh, yeah. I want Munguia to kick his ass. And you think he's going to oh, win? Oh, yeah. I think so. Wow. I think so. I like Munguia, though. No, I like he, Munguia. He's a, no, he's, he's, a he's a warrior, man. Yeah, he's yeah, a fighter. Yeah. But it, it, look, you know how it is in boxing. The, the next young guy has to come up and, mm -hmm. and dethrone, you know, just like me and Chavez back mm -hmm. in the day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it has to happen. Now, you were very I critical of, on the uh, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. Yeah, Jake Paul. I love Mike Tyson, man. I love my. I, I don't want to see him get hurt. I don't want to see him, you know. I know there's well, they're fighting with a headgear. They're fighting with 16-ounce mm -hmm. gloves. Um, I know they're fighting with headgear. Yeah, yeah, they're fighting with headgear. So, it's... I, this is what I tell Jake Paul. Jake Paul, if you want to take the sport serious, right? The way you claim you want to take the sport serious and be world champion, it's not taking this route and fighting Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to sell a lot of tickets. You're going to attract a lot of new fans, which is great. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take the sport serious and be world champion, then take the route, go fight a top 20, go, go fight a top 10 fighter, a top five fighter, be a contender and win a world title. Take the tough road. The yeah. way we did, mm -hmm. you know, this route here, yeah, it's a money grab, but mm -hmm. it's all good. I just wish Mike Tyson, you know, the very big. I love Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. You think yeah. he could beat Mike Tyson? I don't know, man. Tyson, one punch from Tyson can can end it all. So then Tyson's looking like a beast right now. You just said Canelo's on the decline. He's only thirty four. Mike Tyson is sixty. Yeah, but this Mike is not damn sixty. This is, this is, this is, this is an <laughs> exhibition. <laughs> oh, so you don't think they're really gonna be hitting each other? No, going? No. You don't think my Tyson? I think Mike Tyson will be hitting. So them. I mean, you saw the Roy Jones Mike Tyson fight, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, nobody knocked each other out. I mean, you know, we know how to pull punches. Yeah. Um. Do you do you think would you if Ryan Garcia loses this fight? What did you learn from? his loss against Tank that you would do different if he loses this one to Haney. I mean, look, like, I, would you be there for him? Yeah, it, it all depends on him. Look, I'm the promoter, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, a lot of people think that I'm there with him every single day and yeah. this and they're holding his hand. No, mm -hmm. I, he has his own team. Mm -hmm. He has his managers. He has his, you know, he's got everything. I'm just his, I'm just here to organize the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. I can give them advice if they come and ask me for advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, you know, I I can't be I can't be like it's like babysitting. I can't be babysitting when I got sixty fighters in my roster. The the tweets or you hear the stories, it, it's not concerning at all. Yeah, I gotta call him. You know, hey, what's what's going on, bro? He goes, nah, everything's good. I'm trolling, man. I'm trolling. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I I gotta believe that. And that's actually know? great for a promoter because troll, right. troll, 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 tickets, tickets, tickets. Exactly. Sales, you know, exactly. So. I want to ask you another question about Canelo. We, he was here uh, last year, and yeah, he said yeah. he didn't know if you're a good person and that you're all business. Do you think Oscar De La Hoya is a, a good person? If you see everything what he's doing, I think uh, we 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 are the only fighter we 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 stay with them when everybody left him, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm loyal, and and I I treat everybody like a family, and mm -hmm. I I do the same thing with with Golden Boy, but. Uh, yeah, I think he's no that kind of person. You don't have no loyalty. To I don't family. know if he's a good person or not, but uh, I think he's no. He knows the person what he show. You think it's just all business with him? Like, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All business. It's. it's I, I'm. I'm very disappointed with 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 the shit he's talking. Yeah, you know? I really am, because we worked together for what I think eleven years. I built his career. Mm -hmm. You know. We could have easily derailed his career by the opponents that we that we chose for him, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. And you're gonna tell me that he's gonna he's gonna talk shit about me when the man is down, you know? When mm. I was down and out, what four or five years ago, six years ago, mm. he wants to step on my neck and keep me down mm. and talk shit. Like, what's wrong with you, you know? So yeah, does he think I'm a bad guy? Yeah, I'm a bad guy to you. I don't like you. Yeah. For all the shit you talk to me about, mm -hmm. you know, you don't do that. Keep, you put a man down and keep him down and talk shit and continue. Come on, dude. What happened to helping me, helping me out? You mm -hmm. know, we're mm -hmm. fighters. We're we're in the boxing business. We're here together. You know, and so do I like him? I don't like him as a person. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Uh, I mean, he talks about he talks about loyalty and this and that. Mm -hmm. And this guy's jumping from promoter to promoter to promoter to promoter. I mean, what kind of loyalty is that? Mm. Mm. That's not loyalty. You, you think it, you think it could ever be repaired between y'all? No, no. He's that type of person. 
He's that type of person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I a bad guy? Come on, man. Everybody knows me. Everybody knows me. I don't know what that means. <laughs> probably people out there that well, know you. That know like, me. yeah, he's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, what that means. Well, we're, we're, about, we're about to see right now one of them tickets in the first 10 rows. Yeah. I'm coming. Okay. But I got a ticket, but it ain't in one of them 10 rows. Oh. So. I'll hook you up. Are you a good person or not? I'll hook you up. Are you a yeah. good person? Hell yeah. yeah. Thank He's you. a good person. I got you. No, for right. Oh, I do, we, we I do need you. a few tickets. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Come on, Oscar. Seriously. No, seriously. Oh, now you want to go. Whatever you need. No, I'm no, good. Yeah, whatever whatever you now, need. Now, now and her dad want to go. Yeah. I'm on I, I, I control all the tickets, so I got you. I would think okay. so, Golden Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Now I got the pay per view as well. I got you. That's what's up. Well, we appreciate you. you for joining us. The That's fight right. is this oh, weekend. Good, if you man. haven't got your tickets, get your tickets, pay per view as well. And we appreciate you. Thank you for always coming up here, man. Yeah. Nah, for real. Always, man. Always, we appreciate always. having conversations with you. Absolutely. Man, I remember the first time I came here, shit. I was scared as shit. But that's when your wow. book came out. Uh, yeah, we had to talk about everything in that book. No, you know why? Because I was lying to myself. Oh. Mm. That's real. Yep. You got to stop lying to yourself and stop volunteering those lies to others, Oscar. I'm a new man, brother. That's right. Yeah, we good go. person. That's right. Well, it's Oscar De La Hoya. It's the Breakfast Club Positive Notes up next. What up, y'all? It's DJ NV. It's your girl, Jess Hilarious. Charlamagne, the guy we are, the Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here. What you doing this weekend, Jess? Um, I'm going to go to the fight. You going? Yes, I'm going to go to the fight. I am. And I don't ask me who I got, yo, because I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it's changing back and forth. Because I, I got Ryan. I want to have Ryan so bad, but he's been pissing me off. And so I'm allowing that to get me and my feelings. And my feelings right now mixed with hormones and, and the baby. Yeah. I mean, Devin should win the fight. He should win, yeah. But mm. I'm not going to act like Ryan doesn't have the tools to win. It's yeah. just a matter of if Ryan can put it all together. And I'm not sleeping on Ryan Garcia either because I think that if... Devin has to go in there very on point. He can't go in there thinking just because Ryan be been acting win. crazy. Yeah. It's going to be easy. But he, Devin been looking real focused, though. Oh, no, Devin, Devin looks always focused. Yeah. Devin always yeah. focused. Ryan look a little all over the place, so we'll see what happens this well, Maybe that's purposely to throw people off. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe Ryan just gonna give us a good show and do something stupid, bite an ear, or, you know what I mean? Like, just but we do don't want to see dumb. that. We don't want to see yeah, that. I don't want to see it, but, you know... If he getting his ass kicked, he's going to do something stupid. I seen Ryan in the restaurant last night. He left about the same time I did, about 11, 11.30. So he <laughs> should be home sleeping. Damn. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. see. All right. I got. I do have, for the record, I have Devin Haney one in that fight. Though. Me too. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, you got a positive note? Well, first of all, I want to tell y'all, this is your last weekend to get tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival, which is happening next Saturday. I did not know it was going to be next Saturday. April 27th came fast. But next Saturday, we'll be in Atlanta. Uh, Wallow and Gilly, they'll be on that stage. Jess Hilarious will be on that stage. Uh, the Paul Mines Podcast, Horrible Decisions, is hosted by Pretty V and B Dot. So go get your tickets at blackeffect.com slash podcast festival or go to eventbrite.com um, to get your tickets. And we'll see you next Saturday. Um, yes, the positive note is simply this. Mistakes are a fact of life, okay? It is the response to the mistake that counts. Have a great weekend. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?